Welcome to episode 6 of Founders Only. I am your host, Ronster Bait Young, who is also the host of Hustle Share and the founder of Podcast Network Asia. Today is a very, very special episode because we have one of my bestest friends in the industry. He's also a Tito like me, uh, who's been, again, we spent ages or over 10 years in the startup ecosystem. And he is the creator of the Startup PH Facebook group where hundreds, no, not hundreds, tens of thousands of startup founders have already uh, been part of. And today we will be talking about Startup PH then and now. But before we talk about, you know, what the difference is back then of how the startup ecosystem was, we will be talking about what happened um, in, the, in our, the last time since we caught up. Because we were also the two founders that also got acquired um, at, almost at the same time. And we will be talking about our journeys um, as founders under a conglomerate that when that when it, when we get acquired, and we will be talking about again the differences of the startup PH ecosystem back then, the quality of founders back then compared to now, the quality of startups back then compared to now, and also the lessons that we learned and the mistakes that keep on happening back then up till now. But stick around till the end because he had not just five. In the top five founders that we have presented by Shoppable, he gave us a lot of, of, of startup founders that we should look out for, and he did it in Eris. But before we do that, please like, comment, and subscribe, because when we release new episodes in this channel, you would be getting first dibs when we release a brand new founders-only episode. Now let's begin this episode. Founders Only is brought to you by Paymongo the payment gateway for business growth. Paymongo allows your business to accept online payments from customers through Visa, MasterCard, Gcash, GrabPay, Maya, online banking, buy now, pay later, and many more. All with just one online platform. Sign up for free at paymongo.com. Also brought to you by Capita. Capita Software Solution seeks to automate the equity management process for startups, including workflows around cap tables, ESOPs, due diligence, and transactions. Sign up at Capita.com to get started with your digital cap table, ESOP, award granting, and all things equity. Free for companies with under 25 stakeholders. And brought to you by GoTime Bank. GoTime Bank is owned by the Gokong Wei Group, the same companies that brought you brands you love, like Cebu Pacific, Robinsons, True Value, Toys R Us, South Star Drug, and many more. GoTime Bank makes next level banking a breeze with its convenient account opening process. It takes less than five minutes to get started via the app. Plus, get your GoTime Bank Visa card at one of their kiosks for free. Download the GoTime Bank app today and experience the next level of banking. You may visit www.gotimebank.com.ph for more details. And Seatcap. Seatcap is a lending platform powered by UBX Philippines. With Seatcap, you can easily apply for a loan from 5,000 pesos up to 1 million pesos from the comfort of your home nationwide. Visit www.seatcap.ph, sign up, and apply for a loan now. That's www.seekcap.ph. Take your business to new heights by seeking capital with Seatcap. Welcome to the sixth episode of Founders Only. And today is that day where we go and meet the godfather and the creator of this whole ecosystem. Just kidding. This whole very popular startup group called Startup PH and a very good friend of mine. I owe him so many favors, but um, he's a very good friend of mine and I'm glad to have back. The creator of Startup PH and a multi-hat guy. So many founders, startups, and all that. Let's welcome back to the show, Mr. Christian Blanquera. Whoop, whoop. Thank you, thank you. Welcome back, man. How's it been? How's it going? Uh, Yeah, been real busy. Uh, yep. I always try to keep myself busy. You know, ever yeah. ever uh, since the our last acquisition, you know. Yep. So again, that's uh, for those of you who don't know. That's uh that's the bond that will forever link us. Yeah. Right? We were acquired by the same company. He got there first with Jeff. Uh so they Apenovate and Galleon. Um, they got acquired and it's like, hey, I think it I might be a good fit too. And just a few months <laughs> after. Again, I credit him and Joseph 
for this because I met Michelle through you of, yeah. of Sterling. But Joseph, I met, I was able to meet um, Josie through Joseph because Joseph was the lawyer of Sterling. Yeah. You guys double teamed them together and then the rest is history. We all got acquired. Okay, so today what we're going to be talking about is primarily the whole startup ecosystem. Great. Yep. But before that, I want to get to know first. So the last time you were here, we were still in the middle of that acquisition. Yeah, that's right. We were right in the thick of it. Um, there are a lot of good things and a lot of things that we had to really endure um, in the in the conglomerate that we were in. Yeah, no, I, I had a lot of fun there. I, I don't. You did. I was, we I was did. trying to get. I was trying to get the watch, a five year watch. <laughs> did you get it? You, you got one. You got no, a five year watch. No, this is this is my wife's wedding <laughs> oh, okay, gift. Okay, I'm, okay. I'm watchless though. I didn't even no, <laughs> no. So again, walk me through the end of your tenure from that, and walk me through what you did during the pandemic and 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 the like. Oh yeah. Uh, so lit- literally a, a month after uh, I left Sterling, uh-huh. um, just jumped right into Web three. Started uh, re uh, learning about how to develop smart contracts because I was doing that in uh, 2017. Then I then I stopped, and then that gave me the opportunity to jump back into uh, relearning the updates for uh, you know developing smart contracts. It's it's gotten a lot easier. Yeah. Uh, I found it to be a little too easy. <laughs> uh, so I started uh, to volunteer, do like free projects for like uh, NFTs. Okay. Projects here. I, I just said, yeah, I'll, I'll do your smart contract developing for free and wow. things like that. Uh, just offering. Um, then I got pulled into uh, this Australian company who what? needed help to write a music protocol. So they're... Uh, what? Serenade.co. Serenade. Okay, I've never yeah, heard so, of this. Yeah, so I, I I wrote the entire music protocol, the the first version of it, right? And uh, it's 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 they're still using it even today. That's so it's a whole entire music protocol. Uh, I invented a lot of different kinds of smart contracts, like weird ones, but it's it's like uh like theoretically, like we talk about um, you know, how, how do you do like investing or how do you do how do you treat it like a bank, right? Mm-hmm. So I created like these these meta fund contracts, what? vesting contracts. Uh, I, I even created a, a smart contract that dealt with referrals. So, but so re, like basically, if you refer someone, then they they would create like this account for them, and they can automatically get it, like get your get, get their crypto. Yeah, wow. So all different weird things like staking and different things. <laughs> Uh, there's the NFT standard called the ERC721. Oh, I right. made my own version uh, called the ERC721B. So that's f- way faster than the 721. Wow. Right now. Uh, yeah. So done a lot. Oh, I've, I've done a lot of projects for for uh, blue chips like Bored Apes, uh, Three Landers. Bored yeah. Apes. Yeah. Woo. Okay. So if you're super jargonized right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Generally, a- generally, I I built myself up like in a year to get paid like roughly about eight thousand dollars per smart contract. Are you kidding? Me? Yeah, like so. This, I I started in the Philippines just doing stuff for free, and then you know, like word of mouth. You know, then I tried. You know, I had to right, do my, my right. Twitter thing because that's where you know you do yeah, promotions yeah. on Web three. And now he's in freaking yeah, threads then, all the time. Then it went to uh-huh. like Singapore, and then yep. Thailand, and then. Europe and then US just doing projects. Oh, and of course, Australia. Yeah. And again, the reason why he talks like this is he's a <laughs> dev by default. So he, yes, yes. he's a hacker. So just for context, like, what the hell is this guy talking about? Yeah, I, 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 at that time, I was like, I needed a break like uh-huh. from being like the CEO, C, like CTO, yes. entrepreneur. Mm. I kind of wanted to, you know, find what I really wanted to do. That brings you joy. That brings me joy, right? And Apparently, um, uh, it didn't bring joy to my wife <laughs> because, like, because I'm, I'm just sitting there, like, you know, I'm no. on, like, just solo. Just code on, code on, code no, on your screen. Like, no staff, no nothing. I'm not talking to anybody. And, you know, she picks up a job at, at Shoppable, right? right She's like right. You know, a co founder of Shoppable. Uh, and then you know, she's she's coming home every day, you know, like mm-hmm. maybe after like a month and saying, Oh my gosh, there are so many problems. Like you try <laughs> she has to fix this, that, that, and this. Right? right. And I was like, Oh, I, I had a great time. I, you know, I, 
So she comes. That's a recipe for disaster, man. Happy yeah. wife, happy life. So she comes home every day. She's like, uh, like I'm just having like a time in my life, and she's like stressing. Oh my god. Uh, she tells my mom. Oh no. She's like, can you tell Chris to get a job? <laughs> <laughs> because here, because the thing was, she thought I wasn't earning anything because it's all in crypto. I'm not showing right, her my right. crypto wallet or anything. The I'm cash just saying, flow isn't there. I, I'm, I'm just saying, babe, if you need anything, just let me know. <laughs> let me know. <laughs> but, but she, I guess oh, she's no. used to seeing it because she's huh. not, she's not in the like the Web three crypto. The payroll world. isn't yeah, there anymore. She, she doesn't the, the see it. Pay slip. So she tells my mom, and then my mom tells me, Chris. What are you doing? Support your wife. Get a job. <laughs> I go, mom, I'm 40. Get a job. Okay, okay, I will. Get a job. <laughs> oh, man, that's funny. Wait, before we talk about Shopo, because obviously, again, congratulations to you, to Carlo, and to Sam. Again, recently, just rate. we will not talk about how they created Shoppable because those flowers are meant for Carlo and for Sam. Yes. But before we even talk about that, I want to dwindle back um, a little bit because I talk about this in the podcast. Uh, several, uh, several times. It's um, in Hustle Share and here. The last days of Chatbot PH. Mm. How that felt? Because again, first, first question I, I want to understand is that you chalk that up as a win. That acquisition, regardless of what happened to both our companies, that was a win. Oh, yes yeah. or no? Yeah. Right. Cool. That's a highlight of my freaking startup career. How many startups are hustling and struggling right now to get a an exit? Yeah. Very few can say that. So it wasn't, it wasn't about the amount. It's the fact that you finished the race. Yeah. Right. But we will get into the the hard part, which is what happens post-race. I mean, post-acqui, right? There's a honeymoon period. And then there's when the guillotine starts coming in. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So walk me through what happened with the Penavate and how did you technically... Go, go into the end because here's the thing this is these are the facts the moment you ex sell your company the writing's on the wall it's no longer yours mm -hmm. it's not your call and you now work for the acquirer yeah. you're a manager yeah which i've learned how to do well in under that time. so i'm super grateful and again i have nothing but gratitude towards the uh, lim family in sterling Right, nothing. I have no bad eggs to, to to throw at them again, and I wish it would have turned out better. But super grateful. But for you, what, walk me through the last few days and how it felt to kind of see your guys go all the way to the end when you said, "All right, this is the end." Oh, you're gonna make me cry, dude. Are we cry? <laughs> That's what this podcast founders only okay. is about. It's suffering in so, uh, startups. I, I, I've always had the mindset, even before I started my my mm -hmm. first company like when i when i was working in san francisco yeah that i'm actually okay getting fired for the right reasons okay. if if the things that i'm doing is like i truly believe is the right way mm -hmm. you know to build a company to let it grow right um then i'm okay with whatever the end result is success or fail mm -hmm. right uh we can only uh you know, when you're acquired, you can only deal with so much, right? Right, uh, and then there's there's a, like a lot of times it's really out of your control. You can't. You work for someone right? for real. It's a job. It feels like a job, and it is. A you job. know, I, I'm actually okay working for somebody. Same, exactly. Right, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> because if you guys if you guys knew my history, I actually never wanted to become an entrepreneur in the yep. first place. I was if actually. You if you okay, want to listen to bing. that, it's going to be in the description box below. <laughs> the original hustle of Christian Blanquer. There you go. So you have context. Yeah. So uh, like I, I was, okay, I'm okay working for somebody. Is you know like, uh, but the the thing the thing about me is if if I'm gonna start something, uh, best believe I'm gonna finish it. Right? Yes. And I'm never All gonna half to ass end. anything. Yeah. Right. Like if I'm saying I'm doing something, I'm really doing something, and that's all I. I'm doing mm -hmm. right? or all, all that I'm going to do until the job is complete. Mm -hmm. So I think, I think that's more like the, the military side of me. Like just, you know, I'm like, like, like a hammer. All I see is nails. <laughs> <laughs> whack them all everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. So, um, you know, like till the end, I, you know, I, I've always, even to the last day, it was a hundred percent. So I, I'm, I'm okay with whatever the results were. What okay? Because I came clean, and I always say that in the last 
few days of chatbot. And again, I don't blame anyone for this. It's just that times were hard during the pandemic. Yeah. Our acquirer, the Sterling Paper Group, is used to a cash flow, high cash flow, high turnover type of business. Yep. Both our business models, you were a dev shop, we were a chatbot dev shop. Mm. We were an AR business. Yeah, yeah. Accounts receivable, monies were stuck, and in the pandemic, people don't pay on time. Well, you, you know, you know uh, what was not reported at that time, in which I found out, mm. was Galleon was actually doing very well in the pandemic. Yeah. Very well. So, so I, I had, based on what I saw, it had to be one of the top performing companies. In That's amazing. At that time. No, but again, we were the, the easy, the, we were the low hanging fruit that we had, that we had to let go. So it started with, you know, our guys having to not be compensated. And we knew, we knew that those guys are, the, we're not saying compensated well. It's just that the appraisals we typically give them when we were the ones mm. um, running the show are just not doable in a big conglomerate setup. Yeah. And that's fine. Yeah. That's what you sign up for when you, you sell your company. Yep. So inevitably, all your best guys, one by one, will start leaving. Mm. Right? The culture will also start to change. Mm. And when your best guys are about to leave and you can't replenish them with younger guys that are, are you know, similar in nature, your performance is not going to be the same. Yeah. All the way till the end where, you know, at the end of the day, uh, your ability to execute at startup speed it's just super duper hampered and there's just no moves left. Yeah. And we had to go. And the last part was, we, I had to let, tell all the guys that it's gut wrenching. It's like, it's just letting people go again, but it's the end. Right. What was that experience like for you? Uh, no, I, 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 was, I, I it's, it's like I, I knew things that were going to happen. So, you know, I, I am very transparent with my staff. Okay. And I tell them months before, like if, oh, you, if you guys know you. my my advisories, like you yeah. know, a lot of startups I advise, I tell them months before exactly what's going to happen, and it usually happens. So I like I I already told my staff like what is definitely or what would most likely happen, but these are the things that we can do to try to you know How extend it or make it longer. Uh, no, they've uh, because since they came from my startup, right? They're they're used to stuff like that, right? Like like you know like like being put under pressure to yeah. you know perform to perform and do results mm. right uh so yeah but i i thought you know like i concluded basically pandemic uh you know the business models of sterling this is not sustainable i mean if i were you know in their position i i would have yeah i would have done recognized that this is not way earlier too this is not sustainable whatever we're Correct. doing we need to cut loss right yeah, so it's I, I for me it was just really just doing proper communication, doing proper projections, and communicating with the staff that you know we don't know what's going to happen. Right, right. Um, but um, what you can work on right now is you know pushing yourself to start learning, mm -hmm. you know, like or start you know getting as much exposure and experience with the stuff that we're developing because those things will definitely be useful, you know, if ever in your career. And I, I didn't say you're an extra, but, you know, right. if ever in your career because what, what you learn, you know, at Opinive, it's like, uh, it's like, I don't know, it's like, it's yeah, like every year is like 10 skills. years of right. like, you know, experience with us because we, we really push it like from 7 a.m. to like 12 a.m. like almost every day. And like I was, I was really proud of my developers, my staff, mm. you know, for pushing it as hard as I can. A lot of them actually slept in the office, like yeah. just days at a time. Yeah. You know, and they were like ready to go in the morning. But that's yeah. that's like kind of the commitment where or yeah, these these guys will not ever have a problem, mm. you know, finding, you know, a good paying job or, yeah. you know, something else like that. Um I, I, I didn't see it um as depressing at all. Mm -hmm. Uh I knew that things would eventually, you know, come to an end. Mm. Uh, but you know, it's a, that, that's just the thing of life, right? You know, right. life is ever changing. Correct. That's the only thing that we could rely on, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, I'm, I'm but I'm, I, I kept track with almost every developer, you know, and what they're up to, and I'm, I'm really proud of them. That's really proud of them. All right, a couple questions. Again, so we talked about again how you talk to care of the team. And one thing that I'm eternally grateful for that experience with, with our time with Sterling when we got acquired is I literally 
grew up and matured. I remember mm-hmm. Johnny. So Johnny, there was a we had a consultant that was taking care of all of our all of the Sterling acquisitions. Name is Johnny C. Shout out Johnny C. If you're, if you're again, we're <laughs> Johnny, very very grateful for you. I remember verbatim. He said that okay, man, these are. Th- I'm fish out of water. All of a sudden, you we have all these big ass board meetings and all, whatnot, and there are problems that I've that are just very new to me. Verbatim, he said, and that's why you get paid the big bucks. Yeah. When he said that, like, yeah, he's right. I mean, that journey from we before we sold our companies, we were founders, mm. but that was the very first time that post acqui after the honeymoon period of all kumbaya. Mm. That's when I had to become a CEO. Yeah. Walk me through the things that you learned that I mean you I know you hated being CEO, knowing you, because you love hacking. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. You I, love I, hacking. I don't prefer to be a CEO, but right. But I'll I'll do the job if if there's no one else Correct. that wants to do it. That's that's tough. That's, exactly. But what but did you learn not. about yourself and the things that you've learned about, you know, becoming a better exec? Um as you became the, re- the the CEO of of a Penovate during that time that you still carry now, well, you know, I, I, I've always um, been trying to innovate with uh, new technologies, but uh, you know, like there's it's actually two two things I, I really I still love about Sterling. Actually, okay. um, one is they have so many companies, which implies that they have so many problems, yeah. right? And I look at that in a good way because I, I see myself as an engineer and an engineer, you know, what's an engineer if they're not solving problems. So I like, I, like, Oh, what's your problem? Like, like, like there's, there's so many things that can be fixed technically with Sterling. Like right. I, I felt like I was in a playground, but at the same time, there's too many problems that I couldn't cover at all. <laughs> <laughs> Everything are nails again. Yeah, you only yeah, have yeah, two, yeah. And, two then, hammers. and then there's the the whole um, you know like departmentalization, like that's that Silos. department, this yeah. department, and you know like I have to go through loops and holes. And that's normal in the conglomerate. No, but I I, I was like, this, I'm learning, right? This is like okay, I'm I'm learning about you know how navigate this, that all yeah of navigating it. how this works. So I, I I don't really see it as as a hindrance or a blocker, but you know I, I you know I I feel like. Uh, I'm always like a student of life, okay. right? So I'm just, you know, I'm learning all the time. The, the other experience was uh, Miss Josie. Mm. Yeah. The CFO. Yeah. So um, Sam and I, uh, we call her the Iron Lady. She is. Yeah. In a good way. Yeah, no, but but I, I, li- I like it because we, we could say we have been trained by the Iron Lady. Dude, that's why board meetings yeah. now? Yeah. <laughs> we, 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 all, I always we, we, we do our Miss Josie impression, right? No, no, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. I tell Ivy this till now. Like Ivy, I, I don't know. I know you're scared, but if we were able to survive those meetings with Josie and, and yeah, the rest yeah, of the server, yeah, yeah. this is nothing. <laughs> this is nothing. And she goes like, yeah, yeah. you're right. Yeah. But okay. You, through all of this stuff, again, we're talking about how, what life, during Acqui, but what are the things that are indelible to you now? Um, like for me, I'll, I'll start. Okay, good. The things that I carry of becoming a proper CEO is now you understand that as founder before, your decision-making process is, I have an idea, I'll execute it, fuck everything else. Yeah, yeah. That's how founders operate. Yeah, yeah. But if you're a CEO, you recognize that you are not the top dog. You're not on top of the totem pole. There is a board. Mm. And there are things that you're going to have to report. You're technically an upper middle management. Mm. Right? That's it. Number two, you have to look the part. Mm. You have to sound the part. Yeah. You have to portray it because all of a sudden, people now looked at you as, oh my God, people are calling me Sir Ron. Like, dude, nobody fucking calls me sir in my company. <laughs> you know, you know what's funny? Uh-huh. As, I, I, when 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 guys told me like you know like Sir Chris, I was like, guys, call me Sir Chris when I'm forty. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm now now I'm actually forty, so I can't say <laughs> past forty. <laughs> yeah, so Sir Chris. Okay, but those things. But more than anything, is really navigating bureaucracy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bureaucracy is is not bad, especially in a conglomerate. You have to have bureaucracy in systems. Mm. And as a startup founder where there's no system whatsoever, it's organized chaos. Mm. 
I now have a real understanding of how systems work, why people have multiple layers, why do you need to get all of these things, yeah. and how to still be able to navigate that and still achieve the sort of startup speed. If you're running, say, 100 miles per hour before, you want to still be at a 70, 80 range, um, despite all of these hoops and loops that you have to go through. Those are the things. And then lastly, is a, it's a different type of persistence. Yeah. Because now, in a, in a startup, right, there's no need for getting people, oh, do you buy in? Blah, blah, blah. Here, you have to win people over to do something that you think is going to be right. Yeah. That's a lot of persuasion that you're going to have to do. Yeah. And through that, I was able to like, ah, I'm a better communicator. I'm a better persuader. And, you know, I carry that t- till now. So I'm a, a, thanks to that experience, I'm a better founder in PNA. I'm a better human being. What are those for you? Uh, okay, yeah. Like I said, um, uh, you know, like we, we, we joke around about Miss, Miss Josie being my iron lady, but uh, she, she had the need for things to make sense financially, yeah. right? All um, day. Like as, as, as founders, like before, like we, you know, we say, let's do this and let's do that. And mm. we don't look at the spending, the expenditures, right? And how that's, gonna, how that's going to look like. Cash flow. Yeah, cash flow. Oh my God. <laughs> Now I feel like I'm Josie in my company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Like, like, no, 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 seriously. Like, like in, like in Shoppable, um, you know, we we have like another accounting team, and uh-huh. I was like, can I see? Like, there's like, okay, we have all this money, and you know, after our, our fundraising, and we're getting these revenues. I was like, but I need to see the cash flow, right? Unit I, economics, EBITDA. Oh, uh, because like, like for example, in Shoppable's case, right, there's um, operational capital, but there's also working capital that, that needs to be done. So I'm, I'm saying, out of you know. Yeah, there, there's like a number, a final number, but how much of that is allo- like pre-allocated for operational and which one is for working capital? Or are you using the operational capital for working capital? And you, you need to inform exactly. like the CEO like of, of this knowledge because it, cause, you know, if, if it's not managed, then you know, there won't be any salaries. Though we have a lot of money, how can we not pay salaries? Because it could be a mistake that, Although all the uh, capital we have is in working capital. Exactly. Right. So that's like, that's like something like where um, I also apply like, like the, all these financial things and the financial models. Uh, I even uh, created my own um, investment thesis uh, based around like, uh, like for example, um, I have a way to make, uh, to create a valuation for a pre-revenue startup. Exactly. Right. And um Things like uh, like slicing pie, like you know, time is money. Um, so you can, but you know, if you put you could like as a startup, you can either put time or money, mm-hmm. you know, for your equity. So investors put money, but you put in time. But right. not a lot of startups, like founders, put in their time. I mean, put in their time as as a representation of money, mm-hmm. right? So they think that uh, like they're they're getting paid like I don't know, like like twenty, forty, sometimes not even getting paid at all. Yeah, but there should be a value in the book. Yeah. Right. Those are deferred salaries, technically. More yeah, yeah. I, 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 I like to like play it like um, the startup is paying you salary, but you're advancing back to the exactly. company, right? And then so that when way, it's liquid enough to, for you to be able well, to, but but that but that justifies how much equity you know any any founder should right. earn, right? Uh, so I'm putting all this all this logic, you know, and it's 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 always ba- like I, I think because Miss Josie wasn't our first Iron Lady. Actually, we had also uh, Miss Elvi. Uh, from Quadex, you know, mm-hmm. she was our she was our first Iron Lady, and uh, I, I thought that she was just an anomaly until I met Miss Josie, and she they were both talking the same thing, and I was like, hold on, there has to be a pattern here, like like you know, they're, like they're there and they make they make a lot more sense, and for me with my programming background, right, like I, I like to rely on logic. Yeah. Right. And they like to re- rely on math. So like, it's like so when I put it all together, then I was like, okay, I now, now I understand like the mathematics when it comes to startups and uh, pre-seed investing and things right. like that. Right. So that's, I think I'll, that I'll, I'll always carry with me, right. Things need to make sense. So, um, I, I, I honestly, the, the experiences, you know, post acquisition wasn't really bad. I've learned a lot. Same. I, I absorbed a I'm lot. I'm super grateful. And I'm, I'm, I'm applying the things that I definitely agree with, you know, to my advisories yeah. and as well as like, you know, at Shoppable. Like it's, it's weird because um, we, we have, we have a real, a really weird dynamic at Shoppable is 
though, you know, Carlo is the CEO. Sam is the COO. Your real CEO in your life. Yeah, like yeah, that's right. And, I, I, and, and I'm, <laughs> I'm the supporting CTO. There right? you go. But I'm running Exacom. <laughs> And, and Carlo, and Carlo is like he he wants to look at product. I was like, bro, go look at product. I'll handle the revenues. No, because again, <laughs> these are the things that are in the and and um, are now embedded with us. Oh yeah, same yeah, with yeah. thing. Ivy is the one. Ivy is the Josie now. Oh, nice, nice, bro. Nice. You know, and she she handles all. So she money. tells you no all the time. Yeah. <laughs> no, and again, you gotta have someone. I don't care what your company is, startup, whatever. Someone has to be unbiased and the only thing that she cares for or he cares for is the books. Mm, mm. Because the books don't lie. Yeah. Right? And again, if your unit economics, your cash flow is wrecked, I don't care how good you think your product is. I don't think you, I don't care how think you get your team is. I don't think you, I don't care how good you think your, your, yourself is. Yeah. This shit ain't gonna work Mm. because cash is king. Yeah, that's right. And someone needs to protect that king. Yeah, so so if you can imagine like someone like me, like you know, supposed to be the CTO, but I'm running around looking at the accounting, yeah, yeah, and the, <laughs> like the exacoms yeah. and the opscoms, and oh, we're running. Are you running opscom? I'm running also running opscoms, yep. exacoms, but yep. we're doing it in our in our own way. So we I have a, I have a mixture of uh, numbers and data that helps you know yeah. drive decisions and things like that. Right. I mean, it's now a mixture of what we learned as zero to one founders. Yeah, the, yeah. The stuff that we're good at and start a pace. Yeah. But real governance that you see only if you have become a real CEO in a big-ass company that operates in a conglomerate, which is beautiful. Yeah. All right. Now, let's take our first break. And when we come back, we will talk about the real topic of why this man is here. And the reason (laughs) is because we want to talk about Startup PH before and after, then and now. What are the things that we have learned? What are the things that have changed? And what are the things that are still persisting today. We'll talk about that more after the break. Hey, hustlers, are you tired of bank transfer fees and low interest rates on your savings? Say hello to GoTime Bank. GoTime Bank offers interest rates 50x higher than traditional banks. Enjoy this rate on your savings. No minimum amount, no deposit caps, and no tasks or missions to complete. With GoTime Bank, you can make quick and secure transfers to other banks with three bank transfers per week. Plus, earn Go Rewards points and redeem them as cash with a simple tap in the GoTime Bank app. Experience the next level of banking with GoTime Bank. Download the app now or visit www.gotime.com.ph to experience next level banking. It's GoTime! Hey Hustlers, it's a brand new season and I have a brand new tool that will help you scale your startup properly as you grow your team and give them equity eventually. And if you want to have a record of ownership management, efficient equity workflow, and award grants digitally, Capita has you covered with CapMap. CapMap is designed to enable CapTable and ESOP management, as well as digital share insurance for companies across South and Southeast Asia. Also, Capita provides ESOP advisory services for you to set up your plan and engage your employees through equity awards. And trust me, this is a boon because as you grow your team, you want to give their best people a piece of the company that they're hustling for. Investing shares and giving ESOP is not easy if you don't have a product like this. So please do check it out and sign up now at Capita.com with a Q. Again, that's Capita.com with a Q. And it's free for companies that have under 25 stakeholders. Get ready to experience the power of seamless equity workflow management today. And we're back from the break. We are still with OG, the creator of Startup PH. Um, not the telenovela. I don't know did you know that. There was a... The startup, oh yeah, the the, the startup uh, yeah. show. You know, and, I, and I, I was really insulted they didn't ask me for consulting. <laughs> you know? I was like, let me show you what really goes on. I could I could advise them to make it a good show. Same, right? But there's just too much <laughs> chismisan in startup P in the real startup. There, there is enough drama on startup PH for it to be a show, and I can't believe they didn't use any of that. Exactly, right? Exactly. They didn't have to make it up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we know who we know who they are. But okay, all right. Again, startup PH. Before we even start about. You know, the 
what what was it like then and now? Because that's what I want to compare. Yeah. What was it like during our era mm. or the era before us? Okay. Right. Um, let's talk first. Walk me through because I'm not sure if I ever ever got to ask this. Why the hell did you create that Facebook group start a PH? Like I, I have like three different versions of this. Story. Okay. Walk me through <laughs> each version. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, uh, version one goes like this, right? There is, um, uh, so, uh, basically, you know, Jay Pajardo, he had, he was organizing these things called roof camps Yep. Be- before, like there was only roof camp. I was like the only startup. Nope. Thing. No startup. No, no startup no, no weekend. Startup. No nothing. Yeah. And then, um, he started promoting, uh, startup weekend. Mm. Right. And then when startup weekend, you know, was, you know, d- did, did really well. I mean, like everyone started, you know, connecting with each other. That really started the the ecosystem. Yep. Uh, but then they created a Facebook group called uh, Startup Weekend uh, Manila, and the only way you can join that group is if you went to a startup. I remember Manila. this. Okay. Right. Yeah, and I right. thought, well, that's not fair. Like, what if you're like from Cebu or Mindanao? Yeah. Right. And you're not that's able so to join exclusive, this. Right. right. Like, it shouldn't be exclusive. I'm pretty sure that. There's a lot of uh, startups with questions, so I said. So I, I, you know, I actually looked around to see if there wasn't an actual startup group, and mm-hmm. there wasn't. So I was like, oh, "I'll start one." Nice. So I started it, and then you know I got busy, you know, with my own startup, and I'm like, "Oh my gosh, this is going to be so tedious because people started inviting other people, started inviting other yeah, people, yep. and I go, out of which of these people in this group are my friends, <laughs> and I go down the list. And I was like, Siggy, I'll just make them all admins. <laughs> <laughs> so that way I don't have to manage Who the group. Who were the first admins? Yeah. I wasn't no, no, because you have to remember, like, this is like... 2013, 2012. Well, Facebook groups at that time, yeah, 2012, like, was, was still relatively new. People are still using, like, like yeah, forums yeah, and yeah, boards. Yeah, Right? And, you know, like, one of the coveted positions is, like, the moderator position, yep. right? So... You flex that motherfucker out Yeah, there. so it was easy for me just to assign moderators and admins, yeah. and they would naturally feel like, oh... I'm the shit, right? I'm the, ad, you know, I'm the admin. Of this is my bed. Everybody wanted yeah. that position, right? So I was right. like, you know, I, I just did that. Um, and honestly, that's all I did. Really, it was the admins, the moderators. And until now? Really, you know, invite after invite. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah. nothing special about admin. Actually, this mo- this guy there makes is. his work. Okay? Because <laughs> he created a... He created a there's, uh, there's perks for being an admin now. I mean, yeah, but... Yeah. For the longest time, we were the one managing and you're just there lurking, understanding what's going on. But yeah, yeah, yeah. the most active ones are like Pia, <laughs> being consistent to the T ever for Yeah, what? so really, oh, P- I, I, honest, I honestly would say Pia is probably the real the founder. The real MVP. Uh, I mean, based, based, uh-huh. on the, based on the workload. And I, she literally took like 90% of the job, right? right? Just every year after year, just consistently yeah. doing it, yeah. And the reason why it's there, I mean, I mean, there's there's now a, a very very vibrant thing. There's just a lot of user user generated content. But during the early days of that, like man, Pia keep uh, Pia kept that yeah tight. And I, I, I like uh, the other advantage is what's I mean, there was a lot of people trying to do like a startup PH like on their own, yeah. but. Uh, it was normally like you know their organization's startup PH, right? Yeah. And one thing that keep that's remained special about startup PH is it's always grassroots. There's no one that really owns nope. this group, right? It's nope. just yeah. So if you have a question about how to create an MVP, yeah. I still try to answer when I'm free. Like yeah, and we're not we're not we're not charging any money for this thing, no. right? So like this is all free. We volunteer. we just charge equity. Yeah. So give us ten percent of your just kidding. <laughs> Yeah. Business people were telling me you should charge. You should charge for this group. Nah, I'm like, we're, we're this eh, is our way to pay it forward. It could not because it's like you know, I, I have my own business. This is not my my core you know, way way to make money. I don't think that's and right. it's safe to assume, Chris, that the reason why you created this is because this is what you needed when you were also starting up. Yeah, at the same time, because you know, like uh, again, like I, I I just I'm just learning how to be an entrepreneur on the spot. Okay. So I had a lot of questions in both you know general like startup how to do stuff. Huh. But then also, particularly like in the Philippines, like you know, because I, I was still new in the Philippines. Okay, what are the other two versions? Oh, uh, that was actually version two. Okay, I created Startup PH because I wanted to ask my own questions about. You had nothing. Yeah, that, no, so I there's so no the, Reddit so, back then yet. So that yeah, yeah so a, so after I got everything that I need answered, then I kind of just bounced off and you know checked back on the five <laughs> years later and let Pia. 
<laughs> yeah, how's it there? And you don't compensate Pia. So By the way, it's Pia Bernal of Kickstart. So shout out to you, Pia. Uh, okay, what's the third version? Uh, no, no, I won't talk about this. Is okay. just, I'll just give you the two. <laughs> third version, you'll never know. He'll tell yeah, me yeah, after uh, this. Paid, paid content. <laughs> He'll tell me after this. So if you yeah. want to find out what the third version is. Yeah, I'll give you two for free. Subscribe to Hustle free. Share Premium. <laughs> <laughs> right there. No, okay. So. Very, uh, very, very uh, amazing etymology of how Startup PH yeah. is. So again, the group is now what? 11 years old? More or less? Uh, 2012. We're past yeah, 10, 11. 11, 11 years. Yeah, yeah. Holy shit, years. right? That's amazing. So that's what I want to talk about from the perspective of the, of the guy that created this. And you're part of that era where the term startups is just being used. The idea space, the kickstarts of the world. We were co-investees of a Kickstarter at one point. Yeah, that's, that's where right. I met my co-founder Joseph. Yep. Rest yep. in peace. I love you. But yeah, that's that. That was the era, right? Well, I want to. I will talk about certain topics here. Mm. And in your opinion, and you can be as biased as hell. Okay, because this is you. You freaking great at startup PH. We will not have startup PH without Chris Christian Blanquera. No, you know, I, I will take the the title of startup PH historian. 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 Okay, so, I am the startup. So Pia would be like the, the startup PH, like CEO. There. And I would say Jay would be like the startup PH godfather. There you go. Right. The one who like really started it all. And I'm just the interviewer. Yeah. <laughs> Four years in. There. All okay. right. No, that's it. Just uh, we don't get to, the, that's the gap actually that I saw. Because I kept seeing so many mistakes mm. from generation to generation. It's like, fuck, these people are still doing this. And the reason why people are making mistakes is because they never heard the stories of how these companies were made and how they triumphed and whatnot. But now we have four years worth of content turning five years next year. Mm, so congratulations. Go back. And again, I now understand my role, especially with Joseph's passing recently. I'm now able, I was able to immortalize his greatness. And I'm lucky, I'm so blessed that I've immortalized all of you guys, the legit founders of this ecosystem. There's it, this will outlive me. At any time you want to listen, how did Ernest Koo start out? How did Dado Banatao start out? How did Brian Koo start out? How did Christian Blanquera start out? We can always go back. No one's really going to ask that question in the future. No, they will after this episode. <laughs> they will after this episode. So, okay. I want to understand now, bro, um, several things. So, there are formats going to be simple. Yeah. It's going to be then and now. Okay. All right. I'm going to be t t talking about certain topics. We'll just go back and forth. Okay. Okay. Let's start up. Quality of startups then and now. What was it like then in 2012 or even before that? What was what was the startups uh, ecosystem like? And what are the quality of startups? When I say quality of startups, what are the ideas? What are the problems people are trying to solve? And then also, let's compare it to now. Let's, let's start then first. Quality of startups Back then, 2012 era, during our rookie season. Okay, uh, so basically, startups look like um, all they're all they were all crazy. Like there was no <laughs> no industry, right? Like yeah. uh, there, like obviously, like the the whole thing connected was tech, right? So a lot of uh, general websites, like tools. Um, you know, you know what's funny was e commerce wasn't even no. praised. Right. FinTech wasn't even there there. Yeah, and when, when really that's where the, it should have it should have been I thought, you know, in my head. Uh that 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 should've been the main primary investing, but it went to uh, a lot of random things like uh, oh, a lot uh, of web 2.0 shit. Big big was really like, you know, like uh localization, hyperlocalization, you know, and like those kind of things that are you know, I, I don't I don't know who, whoever fed them that that information, <laughs> but, <laughs> but that was like, you know, the, the things that were getting funded. The funding sizes were a lot smaller. Yep. Um, you know, we, we used to have parties. Dude, we celebrate a thirty to $50,000 check and we felt like we were the shit. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, th I think at the time, um, Idea Space was giving like, like 20K. Half, huh? 10K. Yeah, half a million pesos, right? Yeah, Something 10K like US. Yeah, and then like that's and then like uh, Kickstart was doing a million pesos, right? And wh if you if you were like the winner, you're like, oh yeah, we're the shit. Parties, everyone's buying swag. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I'm the party guy. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. was the party yeah. guy. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we don't party every day, but but it's like you know, like that was my start. Looking looking at the founders, right? 
like now, now looking at the founders, you know, when, when I was around them, and including myself, right? I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to say I, I was the different one, but we didn't know the foundations of business, no, right, at all. We were and absolutely think, clueless. I think that uh, oh, in uh, a lot of accelerator programs, incubators, they were focused morally on just the pitch, Correct. on just getting the the seed funding or the pre-seed funding. Right in that regard, so there were no Series A's because it was it was fed to us from Silicon Valley that if we put together some really nice slides, right, you'll get funding. Then you'll get funding, right? And uh, what was never told to us as you know as early startup founders that that's not really true, right? Right? You, like the the reason why you should create a startup is really to do business. It's to start a business, exactly. right? It's entrepreneurship. And the, the funny thing was, is we made startups, but no one made businesses. Yep. <laughs> Back then. No, or we tried. We tried. But the quality no, of startups. Like barely any startup was an actual business. Correct. Because right? a lot they of were just startups. A lot of the founders also. So we're, we're, we're blend this in as quality of startups and quality of founders. Yeah. yeah. Back then. Right. A lot of founders I, I I remember were actually that were more geeks, more, more devs. Mm, that's right. Rather than business people, right? Mm. The other thing that was missing back then it was the quality of startups is dude, we had no role models. Yeah, none. We did we had no standard of what a successful startup was from a local perspective. Yeah. We were looking at, oh, everybody wanted to be the next Facebook. Everyone wanted to be, you, let's create our own Twitter. Yeah, let's create our own PayPal. Yeah, there was right? like no unicorn to look up to. I mean, there were like there were like some small win. No, there was a Dado Banato. He was yeah, the OG, yeah. but how can you relate to that if he wasn't even here, here? Yeah, exactly, right? Like if he was here, like talking to us, it's like, Chris, that's probably the wrong thing to do. Right? Yeah. Or Ron, you probably shouldn't do that. Yep. <laughs> you know, we we made so many rookie mistakes and they're, if they're, uh, exits, they were too few and far between. We Nobody had the formula. And the other thing that I remember, bro, um, the type of problems we were trying to solve, right? Um, again, the tri- type of problems were so small and the TAM, we weren't even taking care of the TAM. I was like, oh, I just, like for me, example, I wanted to solve the guest listing problem of nightclubs in Metro Manila. I thought that was an awesome. I know, but pro- little, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> I was like, I, was like I, I could always get into any club and just call Ron up. What's up? <laughs> and that that was it. <laughs> and I had the boss like, I'm gonna create a website and eventually an app to make that work. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. was so minute. Yeah. That you know, that's something that eventually got funded, mm-hmm. right? But I kept pushing. I right? wasn't a dev. I was one of the very few non-dev guys mm-hmm. that actually got funded there. But imagine the small the the ambition of problems that were try that were trying to be solved. The first big swing that I actually saw in the startup ecosystem, and I want to get your take on this, was when the when Rocket Internet started coming in. They tried to do Zalora, mm. Azada. Mm. Right. This yeah, they were in my space. I, I was right? all, you know. Yeah. And I, I, I should be understand. the most qualified to talk yeah, about Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and they bring in all these consulting guys, the Brian Coos, the Paolo Palo Campos of the world, yep. right? But there was no ecosystem. What was that like from your perspective back then? Uh, okay, so before you can get a junior developer for before Lazada, okay, you can get a junior developer for like fifteen k a month, Are and you can you, you can actually get a senior for thirty. What? Thirty k a month. What year is this? This is 2011. Fuck. Twenty eleven. Okay, let's just jump now. No, huh? I, and I, I, I know exactly what happened. I know, right. oh, I, just, I know so much. All right, so much knowledge, let's so much knowledge. <laughs> okay, spill it out. What happened? Okay, so there, there was a. Oh, I forgot the name of the recruiter. What was the name of the recruiter? Oh, you weren't you right there. No. Okay, uh, but the, we like developers. We had we were on like forums and boards. Particularly, I was part of the PHP user group. Okay, right forums. Just, that was the predominant stack back then. Yeah, it was fun. I used to I used to argue with RJ David. I didn't know him <laughs> at first, but you know, I was like, "Who's this yeah. guy?" But I'm also fresh from right. the U.S. And we used to argue about code all the time. But well, that was awesome, right? Uh, anyways, there was a recruiter from Lazada uh, that came, that entered into a board and started 
offering 100K a month for junior developers, Mm. right? And that went on for an entire year. Basically, I was not able, me personally, I was not able to hire any developers because they were getting such a better rate at Lazada. And I think that, I think if it was affecting me, it was affecting everybody else, like including like your your globes and your smarts. Yeah. During that year, it was really hard to find or to hire developers because Lazada was really sweeping them all, right? At even the junior developers. So if the junior developer is 100K, how much are they paying the seniors? Yeah. Right? Unreal. And that went on for a year. Wow. And then after a year, they did a mass cut, right? Yikes. Like hundreds, like almost close to a thousand people got cut. And then you have now these junior developers who are getting paid 100K a month trying to apply for jobs, expecting the exact same salary. How did that work? Yeah, I, I, I interviewed over 100 of them. I said no. Oh my! I mean, God. I'm willing to pay. Like at that time, I'm, I was like still willing to pay like 100k to somebody, but they got to be really good, you know, like like re- like CTO level. How are they skills wise? <laughs> huh? Skills wise? No, nah, they're terrible. I mean, there were okay, they would be okay as junior developers, but not for the 100k salary. So there's, okay. a, there's, a, there's a difference. Like for example, if you're if if you're a developer and you know you make mistakes, right? Then you know we look at your salary. Oh, it's it's okay because he's not getting paid a lot. But if you know if you're you know, if you don't know what you're doing or you're not committing enough code and you're getting paid this much, then that's when you're in a position of getting, you know, released or fired. Right. Right. So that's that's basically how how I grade things. Like so there's some developers where uh, you know, they make kind of make make some mistakes, but then I, I look at their salary, like, okay, well, it's tolerable based off of his pay pay range, right? But these guys, like, they couldn't even pass the test. Oh no. I didn't I didn't hire any of them. They oh. weren't worth it. So but they were so avid and, and, you know, like, you know, like you have a lot of pride if you're like ex Lazada, right? Like, you know, I, you should get paid. People flex that shit now on LinkedIn. Yeah, X, whatever. I was like, well, X, whatever. not with me. You can look somewhere else. <laughs> I, I mean, All I'm right. like, seriously, like, mm. cause I don't even pay him. I didn't even pay myself a hundred K a month. Mm. So if I like, why would I pay you a <laughs> hundred K? I have a question now. So of course we're going to go through the, the now. Yeah. But what do you think were the catalysts, the biggest things that worked well in startup PH? That really prepped us from, because I look at that era from 2012, 2013, all the way to probably 2015. That was just early times. Mm. You know, the the biggest, our North Star, like everybody wanted to be like them was Caliber. Mm. It's like those guys, YC, they, they were creme de la creme. Everybody wanted to be like Caliber, right? Um, and again, there was uh, there wasn't series A's being thrown out, but there were foundational pieces, and I think re- I remember Paulo Campos talked about this, that when they built Zalora, there wasn't logistics, there wasn't uh, COD, mm. everything had to be built from scratch before Lazada and Zalora can actually thrive. What were yeah. the foundational pieces that built this ecosystem to where it is now that you've seen over the years? Um. Yeah, I think uh, payments. Oh, uh, like you're talking about like like industries. Yeah, industry. No, the whole. Oh, uh, yeah, or whatever. Oh, it's like startup. Not 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 yeah. startup PH like the community, but like the whole startup. Yeah, the whole start in the Philippines. Woo. Uh, payments is one. Yeah, payments easy number one. I would. I mean, th- there hasn't been a lot of startups in. I mean, there 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 has been in logistics. Yeah, but I would say that you know that's also very integral. Yeah. Um, of, of course, e-commerce, right? Uh, honestly, those 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 were like mm. the winning factors, mm. you know, back in the back in those days because those were still the practical right. startups. And you can easily tell who actually st- started and really broke those ceilings. For example, in transportation, who broke the freaking code? Grab. Yeah, yeah. They weren't the first. Our guy Mike Modi was trying to freaking do that shit. Oh yeah, right for yeah, for the longest yeah, yeah. time. But it was Brian and them who. Who really broke the code that all of a sudden, oh, ride hailing works in the Philippines. Yeah. Right? For e-commerce, easy, right? Um, yeah. Zalora, Lazada, you guys in Galleon, right? Um, and the like. All of a sudden, oh, this can work. Yeah. Right? Um, and of course, payments. The OG of all OGs, my Ninong, Dragon Pay. <laughs> Dragon Pay, yeah, right. No, yeah, dude, Dick, yeah. They were doing yeah. this shit before all these other. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What yeah, we're yeah. seeing now in all these fintech products. That's right. Um, are now 
3.0 or 2.0. Mm-hmm. But before that, the one thing that made you pay online if you didn't have a credit card? That was really the only option. Right? Dragon Pay. Yeah, Dick was, Chiang. Was shout out. Yeah, yeah. And now again, that th- these are the giants that literally we built on top of. Because what we're experiencing now in the tech ecosystem, if these guys didn't put the 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 foundations, we have nothing. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Right? Okay, so walk me now through the quality of startups that you see. Being the lurker in Startup PH. <laughs> startups His, historian. Founders, historian. The historian pala. The historian. Um, <laughs> um, wearing Timberlands, by the way. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, the historian, the most swaggy historian. What what's what what do you see now that are different in the quality of startups and the quality of founders? Yeah, um, I, you know, I, I, I'm actually uh, working with a lot of younger startups, right? In my advisories, Tito Chris. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, because I I don't know. There's a lot of a lot of people are like you know focusing their own like generation, right? Like, yeah. like we, we hang out. Yeah. Uh, but I you know I really try to make an effort to look at or to help out or advise. Soon enough, a lot of these founders are going to be as old as your daughters. Yeah. Think yeah. about it. <laughs> crazy. That's crazy. Um okay, number one, i the first thing that I've noticed okay. is their minimum raise is a hundred thousand dollars. Wow. So like the million peso, the the half a million peso. Five million. <laughs> the pesos ones we used to easy. party on like back in the day. No, that's not enough for them. Nope. They want they want a minimum pre-seed of a hundred thousand dollars. Why is that? Uh I, I'm not uh, I, I'd probably say the easiest answer is inflation, mm. you know, or or maybe they're Marte. I don't know. Or no, or <laughs> <laughs> no, they just know that there's money out there that are right, right there. Uh, Pre-seed idea phase zero to one. Yeah, that money is available out there. Yeah. Back then, in our time, we didn't know where the hell to get that. I, I I'd say uh, there's a lot of younger generation that, it, for example, um, that are doing uh, this is a new concept called lifestyle startups. Mm. Uh, that's the so your lifestyle startups are like your um your your, your video what do you call it? uh like like video casting or uh you in, if you're an influencer or if you're selling just one product like on Lazada like you're you know just one brand right like that's, that's a lifestyle startup uh there's a lot actually it's a whole another category of of the startup right. ecosystem here uh the other category of startup ecosystem here is in web three uh there's a lot of uh, younger entrepreneurs who are Looking in Web3 and actually surprisingly doing well. LFG, um, Wagmi, right there. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, very surprised. Um, there's one, I, I, I don't want to say their name because they don't want to be public, but. Okay. Stealth uh, Startup. Yeah, they, they, they launched an NFT collection uh, that recently, actually, just November of last year, right? Uh, sold out. Uh, now they're passively getting between one to 5K a day. What? US dollar. Filipino? Yeah, here they're actually in Pasig. Right? I gotta have this guy. On and, and now, and now they're now they're working on building a metaverse, and it's legit. I visited their office. They are building the like metaverse type thing, and they're not out yet. No, no, no. Oh, I mean, to their community. I mean, if you're in Web three, you would you would know. No, I understand, but they're not like out there trying to make noise about this thing. There's some some startups who need to do the fundraising, uh, and there's some that right. actually are okay with what they did. Uh, and that's so, one thing that never so, but, changes. But, but you know, like that, that's that's that started more like a like a lifestyle startup, right? Like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, like yeah. what I mentioned. Lifestyle startups um by default are never investable. So if they're not investable, then there's really no need for them to be on the open saying that they're this and that, they're that, right? They're, so yeah. in our case, there was only one category of startup, which is just the ones who raise funds. Correct. <laughs> right now, now there's all these kinds of Different startups. Wow, right? that the, from zero. I mean, they're bootstrap in lifestyle, mm-hmm. and they don't have to take the path of the VC funding route. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. so. They 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 just make enough money to support their personal lifestyle. That's why I call wow. it a lifestyle startup. Okay. All right. Now, quality of founders. What are, what's different now with this uh, the the startup founders that you've seen? I think. Uh, in, in terms of general business know-how or business knowledge, it's generally the same from before. We still don't know how to make money. <laughs> no, I mean, like, there, like if, if you ask a like a, any any new founder here, like, oh, what's you know, can can you expound on your business model? What are your financial projections? Mm. You know, P and L, all that stuff. Did you even write a business plan? Mm. You know, the usual answers are no to, to all of the above, right? just like like it was before. Um, 
But there's one thing that I've seen. Yeah. I've seen because now there's a lot of tech jobs over the past 10 years. Mm. I see a lot of fundable founders that were former tech employees that were making a killing before. Yeah, that's right. That's that right. now you're not coming in. Because before, when we were startup founders, what was your job before? I don't know. I was in marketing somewhere. <laughs> right? My job before was I was in Groupon. I was very, very early, early days. Yeah, yeah. And I felt I, that felt super tech already yeah. before. Right? But these guys were like, X Lazada, X Shopee, X Grab, X whatever, yeah. right? Now all of a sudden, like, whoo, they, they know what they're talking about. There's a level of expertise, product, and whatnot that when they decide to be, become founders. Oh, absolutely. Because, like, there, there wasn't, a, like, you know, there's no way you can get experience before, like, in startups because there was no startups. The only startups or no, we no, had. No categorized tech startups, no, right? No. Yeah. So nobody knew what the hell they were doing in general. But now, People like with uh, with all the Series A's and mm. you know, like Series C's, you know that are that are out there right now. Then people actually knows. I don't want to say like knows everything about startups, but has the experience of working Correct. in a startup environment. Correct. You know, and you know, there's the now culture, di- there's now it. different kinds of you know like programming jobs and tech mm. jobs and marketing jobs, like all like like the, the entire landscape of uh, job opportunities and different kinds of work is, is really, uh, versatile in, mm-hmm. in the startup ecosystem. What are the rates now? You mentioned the rates before. What are the rates Yeah, actually now, now, now it's, you know, I mean, junior developers still shouldn't get paid a hundred K, but. <laughs> <laughs> but it's pretty close to that now. Like honestly, like 40. Yeah. To be honest. Yeah. Like, that sounds, sounds about right. But, um, like, uh, all of the developers, uh, that I'm paying, are generally between the 75 to 150k range. Shit. So imagine if you are a student right now or whatever, you if there's one skill you need to learn that will prepare you when the AI, when the robots are become our overlords, <laughs> is learn how to freaking code. Oh yeah. Cuz even if you suck as an entrepreneur, whatever, if you learn how to code, you're never go uh hungry. Even even weird things like um AI, right? We we talked we talked about AI back in the day, but now yeah. it's like Holy there shit. are AI it's so jobs, real. yeah, right. There's like the GPT and like some weird stuff. Like people, there's new jobs being invented every day. <laughs> we started that out in Chatbot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Chatbot PH, like oh, yeah, everybody's all, throwing all the rage. Like, bro, I started that shit here. What are you talking about, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we were creating new jobs I've never heard of. Yeah. An AI trainer. What the hell is an AI trainer? Yeah, how, first, how, can, how can you find that on Job Street? No. no. <laughs> my first AI trainer was a script writer who did theater before. Oh, okay. Because if you look at the the the, the way people chat, yeah. it's very much like writing a script for movies. Mm, mm. So that's how you do it. So again, now it's normal. There's a lot of AI writer uh, stuff as well. Now, okay. Um, ambition. Of startup founders now. What it was so remember before the problems we were trying to solve was I want to get you in the guest list of clubs in Metro Manila. <laughs> Dude, now it's like shit. They understand their TAM. They're super mega ambitious. They mm. want to be worldwide or regional at all. Mm. And they th- they can do it. They have the balls to even do it and understand that TAM. Yeah. What are you seeing with that that ambition? Uh, with 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 startup founders now, and by the way, the startup founders now doesn't have to be first time founders. Mm. It can be like us. Startup founders in our under second or third or fourth startup. Yeah, right. Uh, I've I've seen a lot of commonality now that uh, we are all in agreement that we need to have our first organic unicorn, right? So we are all on our own personal mission into seeing that happen. Right, so I think the far the furthest we got organically is uh, Series C, right? D, there's a D. A D, D. Who's there's D? Some- oh wait, I thought you knew everything. There's someone. I'll tell you later. We wait, got- is it announced or not announced? Not yet. Oh, but someone- how do I know? No, I-, I thought you knew. You're the you're. Are the they historian. doing the raise right now? I think they are done. Okay, they just haven't announced. But there there are a couple of D's now. That's only one, probably one. Couple. I'll okay. tell you later. A couple of D's. Yeah. Big D's. Big black D's. <laughs> wait, wait. Well, are we talking about startups here? <laughs> <laughs> no, but there, there are D's, man. There is. You can easily tell. Look at the Sunicorn list. Okay. Who's doing well there? Okay. There. Interesting. 
but we're all, we're almost there, right? So yeah. it, feel, it feels good. Because yeah. once once that happens, actually, it's not the fact that we have our first unicorn. But what matters, and then there's a lot of pressure, whoever is the first unicorn, is what did they do as being a unicorn? Correct. Right? So it's like saying, you know, okay, you're, you're, you're now the new Michael Jordan, right? Or you're now the new heavyweight champion of the world. Correct. You're the GOAT. What are you going to do with that? Mm. Right? So it's not enough just getting the title. But what you do with that will affect the future of all startups here in the Philippines. And, I, and, and in fairness to the Sunicorn founders, they're all nice. Mm. They want to pay it for it. That's, That's why good. I love them. That's why I want to give them more flowers. Like, dude, let's amplify whatever the hell you're trying to do. Because us at the back, we all look up to you for paving the way. Mm. But if you've already paved the way, there's so many more kids at the back that can be just like that. Because now they realize that, oh, a local Filipino founder have created a unicorn in and from the Philippines. Yeah. When that happens, oh my God, the whole eco, the whole startup PH group will be partying. <laughs> right? No, but again, ambition also. People are super ambitious. And, and then that's why they, they're getting all these funding that, okay, we're not trying to solve us just this problem anymore. It's a bigger problem. Yeah. And that's also personal to them, which I love, right? But in terms of quality of teams, you, you, you've, you've seen this, mm. right? You're an advisor, you're an FI, mm. right? You still see some teams that are, okay, um, flawed. Yep. But there are teams that, holy shit, they are so good. Yeah. What are you seeing with these teams that are happening now compared to what the teams were like before? Because before, we will have a team with three tech founders, yeah. No, no biz dev, no, no marketing. Hala, good luck. Yeah. Right now, it's super multifaceted. What are the teams like now? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm jealous because it's, it, it is really well diverse. Like these founders, they, I don't know. Uh, I, I think I still think the biggest problem that uh, founders have, like when they're first starting up, is finding their their first CTO or their, you know, their CTO. Mm -hmm. um, but when the, when they get past the CTO, everything else is kind of, kind of falls through. Kind of, kind of easy to to get like. Uh, CMOs or CMOs with a lot of experience with startups. Yeah. There's COOs now that you know came from the startups, like you know either they were running it or they were helping someone yep. to run it, and then now they're like really qualified COOs. Mm. Uh, they're they're really easy pickups, you know, kind of thing. Uh, and they're also savvy, so they they don't they they know about equity, they know about how vesting mm. goes and how it works. Um, HR was a pain in the ass as a startup because we didn't know what was possible, but now we know about company culture and yep. you know what kind of policies. Like nobody knew about like the rules in the BIR or the Dole. <laughs> we didn't we didn't even know do we thought Dole was the was the drink the, the, yeah, the drink. <laughs> yeah, and, you know now we know about that stuff. Yep. Uh, so like th we we're incorporating now all of these things that we should know now. Mm -hmm. um, you know and like creating these really awesome groups, more more stable groups than just what we had before, which was zero, you know, and just yeah. us as being friends and, you know, we're all compadres, you know, and things right. like that. And that's... All I, I want to dig, dig deeper in that because, again, it doesn't matter what era, what era it is from our time to now. CTOs are the hardest to find. You being a CTO, being CEO, who run war, both hats. If you're going to give advice to those people who are looking, it's like, because you see this all the time in Startup PH, right? There's a random dude every week that will go, I have an idea. Do I want I want to create a startup? Who should I hire as my developer? Mm. No, you shouldn't hire a developer. Get a CTO. <laughs> You're going to get fleeced. Please don't, right? How do you look for a proper CTO? Well, honestly, that's the first challenge of being a CEO is you have to learn how to be convincing persuade someone to people yeah honestly the art of persuasion the art of communication is definitely going to be your best friend here yep uh, because you're going to need that when you're going to be pitching anyways right so if you have a problem finding a cto you're also going to have problems finding investors if you have problems finding investors you also have will have a problem finding a cto yep you just need to be convincing mm -hmm. enough right and uh, i generally the, the way i coach it is you have to share what you're doing is bigger than yourself. It's bigger mm -hmm. than, you know, the money, but, you know, that actually has 
uh, you know, some sort of social benefit or something. We're working on something bigger, right? Yeah. We're striving to be the greatest, to be the first, mm. right? And you could be a part of that, you know, kind of like that that selling point for a CTO or, you know, for someone who has even like a senior developer, right? Uh, we, we do, I, I do this with every developer. I just say, look, you could work uh, before, like you, you could work at a globe, right? And you probably can, you know, stay in the shadows and, you know, your, your, your raises may come like, you know, every couple of years, mm-hmm. or you could take your chance now while you're young and work with a startup, Correct. right? Where you definitely, we heard you can make, more decisions, right? And you can move up the ladder, you can get raises, you know, as the company grows, which is no problem. And again, knowing what I know now, all right, I'm just going to just say, I made this mistake. This is always the mistake that I keep making. A good CTO isn't someone who can just code. Bro, what are the, what are the traits of a good CTO? And by the way, a CTO at zero to one is a different CTO of when you have multiple devs that are very, very complex. You have DevOps, you have freaking front end, back end, and multiple layers of of seniorship or seniority there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the type of CTO you need there are different rather than zero, zero to one. Where can you find these types of CTOs? That there, you there, well, there's actually two types of CTOs. Okay. So one is you have the programming CTO. Okay. Hey guys, I'm the programming CTO. There you go. <laughs> People who love to code. <laughs> right. Yeah. And there's there's ones that are like the leader kind of CTO where they know how to talk to developers, lead teams, design things like architecturally. Yep. Right. So there's there's those two kinds. So depending on the situation you need, do you need like normally as a startup since you don't have a tech team, you really need like the programming CTO. Right. Yes. And the difference between Someone a senior who can develop- build shit. Yeah. The difference between a, a a CTO and a senior developer is the CTO just happens to be more charismatic. Mm. So there's some there is a persuasion charisma factor still there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, how do you do that if you're all introverts? Uh GitHub? It's, it's gonna be very hard to find funding as introverts unless you unless your numbers can speak for yourself. Got it. So a CTO that you need apparently has to have a little bit of charisma to really rally a team of other devs behind it. Yeah, right? yeah, I'd say so. We, because they're they're looking for someone to look up to, right? A role model, right? Uh, they're looking because like a lot of developers have gone through, like for example, developing something with no designs, with no wireframes. How do you like what kind of what kind of servers are we gonna use, right? right. And things like that. Like, there's nothing giving a holistic vision about how we're gonna do this yeah. and how it's gonna scale. And a lot and, and when you when you don't have someone like that, then what's gonna happen in your series A, which is common for everybody in Series A, is you accrue so much <laughs> technical debt. And you're gonna have to redo a lot yes, of shit. Yes, yes, yes. Which so, is expensive. Yeah. So I I think getting a CTO early on that can address technical debt, right, as well as scaling the platform early on would mm. would be beneficial in terms of savings. How do you know and, if you have one? Because again, people, especially from a non tech point of view, mm. is where people there's that mismatch usually mm. happens. Like oh, I think this guy is good, but you can't tell. You have you you don't you can't read code. How the fuck are you gonna? Know? I found a way. So, uh, basically, it's just two things: cost. And practicality. Okay. It's what is that. what is the cost of what they're building? And and we talk about also servers. Like, does is what you're building implying that we have to get ten thousand dollar a month AWS servers, you know, kind of thing? Or could is there a way we can do it with a zero cost and mm-hmm. then z- scale up with a Heroku type of environment? Yeah, that's right. Well, when, in our days, there's something called serverless. Oh, yes. Right. So technically, the serverless is you know. Just if you guys don't know, we used to have stack, stack and chatbot before last last yeah, few yeah. years. Yeah. So like a million requests for a dollar, and your first one million is free. Wow. Like it's kind of like a no brainer. And now you know what you you know a lot of people don't know this is there's now serverless databases. What? Yes. Yes. Wow. So um, that's like one of the things that I like because I you know like it's, it's funny because uh. When I talk to other CTOs, right, they're they're all proud. They're on AWS and you know Google Cloud, Azure, Azure whatever. Right? Digital at, Ocean. Honestly, at Shopable, we're we're not on any of those. What? We're on Vercel. We're on CockroachDB. 
Bunny CDN. <laughs> because those services build on top of AWS. Got so it's it. called like so a it's jam not stack. native there. Okay. Yeah. So, but it's going to be funny when we, I mean, I, this is just in my head. Okay. I'm not, I mean, okay. I, but, but I, I want to say it so it can be manifested. Okay. Right? Okay. Let's do it. I want to, it'll be really funny when we get to our series A. Okay. That they realize we're not raising funds because of our server costs. Because our server costs theoretically by series A should still be under a hundred dollars a month. That is <laughs> and that's how you know you have a solid ass CTO. Here's why. Because Chris already saw what scale will look like, yeah. even if they're just building an MVP yeah. all the way to scale. Yeah. And you know you've done that where someone who can build the product but also have led the team. So Chris is actually both, you know, someone who can, again, the builder CTO, but also manage a whole army of devs as well. Yeah, that's right. But again, you don't have to get a Chris all the time. All right. There, there, sometimes you, you just have to be cognizant of, okay, my CTO at an MVP phase needs to be a builder. And probably, hopefully your CTO evolves down the road to become a leader in a pack. Mm. Um, and if not, then you're going to have to find someone who can be, that person. Yeah. Well, right, right now, uh, I only have five developers. Okay, wow. and these are all stallions. Ooh. Like, if you look at, you you would definitely want to ride them. They are just so beautiful and majestic. Okay, grazing. You know, like they're they're just beautiful. Shining. Are they flying stallions? Uh, yeah, you know, like one one stallion is like better than the other. Just wow. every time we hire, it just, it just looks amazing. Yeah. Right. Um. So we had a um uh we picked up a project manager recently this year and I just recently did his um, review uh, last week and I asked him what do you think about the developer the developing team so far and he goes yeah uh, before I was kind of used to having 25 developers he's like a former Kumu okay right like before I'm used to having like you know managing 25 developers I was like well what do you prefer now do you, do you think what we need to increase our our development our developer size like no this is per they're 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 like the equivalent of twenty five developers. Oh <laughs> Super. I like that's what I want. That's a perfect that's startup. Amazing. But again, that's hard to build, and that's how you know you know <laughs> how to be, uh, to do a build team right there. All right, we went super off tangent. Let's go back. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. On, on, Guys, on, I'm, I'm on, a programmer. My bad. Right. No, <laughs> no yeah. So we, we can I, cut I, that I, later. Last topic before we take our last break. I want to understand the most the the, the hardest part right now. Fundraising back then, what was that like? And fundraising now, what was it like? What 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 is it like? So again, we're in a in a funding winter. Oh my God, it's so hard. Everybody's yeah. just there's no money out there. It's it's so hard, right? And, and and if there is, it's you're very lucky. But back then, during our era, again, we were celebrating a ten thousand dollar check, twenty thousand dollar check, yeah, fifty thousand. We we felt like we were ballers, yeah, right. Um, I remember. During that time, aside from us not being able to really find any big check, no, there's no fun. Very, very few VCs regionally were here. The other thing that I saw the startup founders didn't know how to do well is how to pitch. Yeah. Right? Like, oh my God, what are you doing? Right? Yeah. Now everybody sounds like Arti Lopez. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Yeah. Arti Lopez is is the this is your there's your fault. Now whenever there's um <laughs> pitching competitions, the judges have a hard time because they're all good at at, at, uh, yeah, yeah. at pitching, right? But in, in in your point of view, what was the difference between before and now in in terms of fundraising? You know, you, you know like when you when you mentioned Caliber, I I think I think we all idolized uh Paul was because he he actually had the balls to raise outside yeah, of the Philippines. Absolutely. Right. Um, um, and compared to now, there there's more people who are raising money from abroad. Like they're they're really talking to investor calls. Like like Shopable Carla, he would never tell you this. Um, so I might as well just, just say it. Mm. He literally went through seventy investor calls, Ooh. right on on the phone, and then fifty investor meetings just to close his deal. That's right? amazing. And it took over a year. Yeah. To do it, but this is not just all local. Obviously, there's you can't you can't book like a whole year. It's nope. Regionally, internationally, Europe, like literally calls and you have like to hit three and four to in the morning. That done too. And the reason why I'm saying this is because this guy Carlo made me go to every single one of those investor meetings. 
Ah, oh. just so I could say hi. <laughs> and he did the whole entire pitch. And, you know, wow. like, and uh, like, yeah, like there, you you can get coaching, like you know, doing pitching. But you know, I, I never gave Carlo any pitching advice. Wow. Because wow. I said, like, oh, let's just see, right? Wow. But but anybody who's pitched over 50 times like to personally to investors will eventually be really good at it absolutely right so the, reps will, <laughs> the reps will just uh be, be there. Like you'll naturally get her there's nothing I, I can tell you you know better than actual experience right, right. you know and, and the decks are just so much better now yeah, you know, yeah back yeah. then yeah you, you know, they don't even know what a problem solution slide looks like right? yeah yeah, yeah. They, they they can articulate they they put the right metrics there, the traction metrics are there. It's complete. Yeah. Did we even have a TAM in our days? I don't Yeah, it's that. all bullshit. I mean, I never had <laughs> the TAM slide. The TAM slide now is still bullshit anyway. I'm like, what's your market size? I'm this big. 500 it's, billion. It's, it's this there big. This go. is the market size. And then you see this a lot in FI, right? We will be a $500 million co dollar company in yeah. two years. Huh? How? Right, mm. and I look at your team. Like now, all of these things are all intertwined, and I yeah. love it. Yeah. And then this is what's different nowadays. Yeah. Back then, we will pitch. These are all just. Oh, if we had the money, we would be able to do this. Yeah. You, you, know, like, 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 you know what I wanted to say to investors back in the day? If you could just tell me exactly what you want me to pitch, uh -huh. then I will give me a day and I will pitch it. All right. Don't let me pitch randomly <laughs> things. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> No, but but the, the 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 people now again, so they're able to articulate all of this. Mm. Now there's metrics to back it up. Yeah. yeah, it's freaking beautiful, right? That okay, you're saying that okay. Back then we say if you only fund me, I will do this. Mm. Now I was like, yeah, I I need you to support this because I'm already doing this, and that's how you know you have a legit startup because you're not waiting for hey, I I, I can only do this huh, if you. Fund me. Yeah. Because, you know, that's also bull. Like most of the people that say that, we will not be able to do it mm. because you're giving me an excuse that you cannot pull it off with whatever resources or whatever team you do and and kill it. Yeah. Right. Okay. Last question before we take our last break and you um, telling us your, your top five or you even have five. I think you, you did more. Right. Um, <laughs> in what era? In what era? I want to understand... <laughs> Right. From then and now, um, what do you think are the common mistakes people still do before that people are still doing now? In startups. Yeah, in startup PH, huh? Yeah, they don't do their they don't do their business math. Mm. That's that's really that's really the most common thing. Uh I actually I'll the most of the startups I work on, um, they work on getting to the black first, right? And that's 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 where Possible. I like I like them. Like I I do their I do my own feasibility on them, and if I like them enough, I try to see if they can actually change to get to this point and then get to the black where they're where they're not uh, being pro you know profitable, but they're not also losing. They're really just right there. Yeah. Right. And then from there. I can really push them to other investors, right? Because they, they, they are, you know, if you're, if you're, if you're able to balance to be on the black, then that, that shows a lot of financial discipline. Absolutely. Right? Versus just being in the red. There's a lot of startups that I've seen uh, who are actually reaching that goal before they actually do their raise, which I think that's one of the, one of the good reasons why uh, the raises have been more successful, you know, relatively. Compared to because they've proven they have a repeatable and scalable business model mm -mm. before they even raise. Okay, what are the other mistakes that you see that are being done now? Mm. The founder split is <laughs> same, bro. It's the same. When you say founder split, what do you mean? Uh, everyone gets equal equity, uh, but I, I no. get I should get a little more because I'm the CEO. <laughs> Right. <laughs> just, Why is just that because I feel like it. Mm. Uh, or, 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 I gave 10% to my advisor. Mm. <laughs> Ouch. I made that mistake. Oh, okay, yeah. back then. And then there's there's still even like uh like venture builders who are taking more than five percent. They're taking still taking like 30 to 60% of a startup. 
expecting that they're going to go to Series A when they don't really understand the situation. Yeah. And back then, people were so already not, doing that. It's not just startups. It's also these incubators, these these venture builders, these you know accelerators. Not all of them. The, the ones who are taking more than five, seven percent of their of the cut. Mm. At early on, it shouldn't do that. Why is that a bad thing? Because um, if you think about like the, the current founders you you say you see in Series C and Series D. Mm. Imagine if they were raising for Series D, but they only have four percent left of their own founders' shares equity. So at Series C, they're not incentivized to continue because so much equity has been given away. You know, Series B, A, and you know, seed, pre-seed. Mm. They've given away so much equity. So investors, you know, who are in the early stages, like you know, seed or Series A, they look at that. And they go, uh oh, the founder doesn't have enough shares. Right. So they're like, okay, well, maybe he'll stick on like Series B, but he's probably going to leave after C because he's no longer incentivized. Mm. Right. So that's, I, I don't know if venture builders understand that concept or not. Right. It's just, you're shooting yourself in, unless you're willing to fund that startup yeah. for the rest of its journey. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the most you're gonna make is a is a ten x. But I know, like a lot of a lot of uh, investor, everybody's looking for like the hundred thousand x. Yeah, and you yeah. max out at Series A yeah. tops, tops if, with, with that type of structure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right. It's just terrible. unless you really want to make it a hyper growth in the black type of startup, a lifestyle business per- perhaps. Then puede, mm, right? Puede. But oh. lifestyle startups by default are investable. Exactly. Now, all right. Last few mistakes that you've you've seen because I'll I'll, sh- I'll share one. I'll share one. I want to hear. Okay. <laughs> what <is it? laughs> no. Okay. There's still startup founders before startup founders in the middle in this current generation or before this generation and startup founders now still drink the hype Kool Aid. Mm. Like, dude, if you get on Hustle Share, it's not a big deal. Mm. Right? That you need to be in front of all this blah, blah, blah that I've raised X amount. That's not the scorecard. Mm. The scorecard is can you scale your startup fast enough before you run out of runway? And a lot of the the mistakes that I really see that people when you say they still buy the hype, a lot of founders and I've seen iterations of this from generation to generation and I know it's the beginning of the end when people do this, when they prioritize themselves over the startup. Mm. That I'm the star. I am this. <laughs> whatever. Yeah. Right? Because the real ones, they don't even have time to freaking guess on Hustle Share. Oh, I got to go then. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I forced this guy. No, what, what I'm talking about is like, they don't want the attention just because they're too busy hustling. Mm. They're too busy Getting shit done. Yeah, that's right. Right? They don't have time to be like, hey, I want to be here, blah, blah, blah. That's already a red flag when I see like, God, this guy wants all this attention, all the flowers. But if you look under the hood, Mm. there's nothing. (laughs) Right? And I've seen iterations. And I've seen, you know what happens to every single one that guy, they they, they just dissipate Mm. eventually. It's sad. Because imagine if they use all that charisma to actually get shit done. Mm. It would have been beautiful. Do you agree? I agree, definitely. Right? I mean, yeah. we, 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 I'm pretty sure you can name a few. We won't name names. No, You're, certainly not. No, no, pra- no. Paid, paid video content. <laughs> <laughs> we'll start saying, right. we'll start reeling off names. No, no, no. <laughs> nope, nope. We do, we're not that type of podcast. Okay. Last, well, what are the last few lessons that, or last lesson that you've seen that people still make mistakes? Ah, uh, okay. Uh, my, my last one was similar to yours, but it's it's the the new money mentality. New money mentality. What does that mean? It, so if, 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 if you give a, if I give you a thousand pesos, right? But like, here, bro, take a thousand pesos. You'd be like, oh, that's cool, man. But if I give a thousand pesos to like a four or five year old kid, they're gonna be like, whoa, I can do so much with this. And then they spend it all in the sorry, sorry store. They buy all their candy. And one day I go, what happened to all your thousand pesos? I bought all this candy. Look at all this candy I got. Right? That's new money, new money mentality. Put that in same regards instead of 1,000 pesos to like someone who never had a million dollars, you they now have access to a million dollars theoretically. 
they're probably going to do the exact same thing as that kid. Yeah, absolutely. And it's discipline, right? Uh, that's why you want to have those founders who had that, that, that um, governance in how to handle money. Because mm. if you have that new money mentality, I don't care if you have a million or two million, three million dollars. Yeah. If you have that mindset, that now, now, now through experience, I could, I could tell startups, oh, I could easily spend a million dollars in a couple months. <laughs> <laughs> no, red flag. <laughs> no, nah, that is so. That, that's what I'm saying is like a million dollars is, is relative, right? To, to your spend. S- spend it like you think you're two chains yeah, or so we, you're a Snoop Dogg. So uh-uh. we, we got, we got, you got to be careful if you, if you raise. It doesn't mean you should, you know, 10 extra that stack size. It's not yours. <laughs> that money is used to grow your startup. Yeah. It's no, 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 it's used to grow your revenues. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. All right. Now let's take our last week and when we come back, we will discuss Christian's top five. Is it really top five? Or are you going to go the extreme route and name multiple top fives? We will see that. I'm just going to riddle about- off names. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's talk about that more after the break. Hey, hustlers. PayMongo is your payment gateway for business growth. With PayMongo, you can accept online payments from your customers through Visa and MasterCard, debit and credit cards, GCash, Maya, RabPay, online banking, BNPL, installments, and many more. All with just one platform. For business owners, online payment collection used to be such a pain. Long negotiations and paperwork, complex developer docs, and having to gather all these proofs of payment from your customers would be a serious drag in your operations. Now with just one partner, you can simplify all of that and focus on growing your business. PayMongo's story showcases the resilience of Filipino businesses in today's digital economy. During the pandemic, they became a lifeline to countless businesses by helping them go online quickly, serve their customers, and generate revenue. They have since grown exponentially and now support thousands of businesses from SMEs to venture-backed startups and even the most established enterprises in the country. PayMongo's products allow you to accept all types of payments with or without a website, and they continue to expand into more streamlined financial services. So sign up for free today. Visit PayMongo.com to get your business activated in one week or less. Hey, hustlers, I know how difficult it is to do fundraising at the moment for any startup or any business. And especially given this market where investors are afraid to write any significant check that would help your startup either scale or extend your runway, your options are very, very limited. But don't worry, I think I found a solution that just might help. So if you're seeking capital for your Sari Sari store, online business, restaurant, or startup, CCAP's got you with a 24-7 fast and easy online loan application process, minimal paperwork, and real-time updates. Say goodbye to long lines and long waits with CCAP, UBX Philippines' online lending marketplace for micro, small, and medium enterprises. Choose from a wide variety of loan products from 5,000 pesos up to 1 million pesos from trusted lenders. With CCAP, you can apply for a business loan that's tailored to your needs, whether it's for capital, production, operations, or expansion. And check this out. You can apply anytime, anywhere in the Philippines. So what are you waiting for? Sign up at www.ccap.ph. That's www.seekcap.ph and apply for a loan now. And we're back from the break. We are still with Chris Blanquera then told us the amazing... Before and after, I, I know I know we can Surprise, talk about it's, it's that. It's still me, guys. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we can we can talk about that more with with other guys who are OGs and whatnot. But I loved how we were able to then discuss the quality of startups, quality of founders, and even the persisting problems that we're doing. But we can't wrap this up and talk about your top five. Um, brought to you by Shoppable, by the way. <laughs> um, without talking about um, the most important thing the lessons we've learned Mm -hmm. um, from a startup PH uh, perspective. Because at the end of the day, again, I'll I'll just, I'll probably just start it off that we've made so much progress, but for some reason, we as an ecosystem 
just have a self-sabotaging behavior that we just fuck ourselves up. I don't know what it is. Because if you look at the to grand totem pole, right? Look at Singapore, Indonesia, Thailand, Vietnam. All of these countries have already had what we've been trying to get once. An organic unicorn. They have multiple. And I don't know why. Um, but I can point it to, again, we self-sabotage. We when Maybe it's new money mentality that you have. But there's multiple layers. And that's what I want to uh, unpack. Right, but I feel like we just have an ability as an ecosystem. When somebody is already nearing that unicorn status, mm -hmm. we go back to crab mode. Yeah, which is super heartbreaking. Yeah, because we just need one, and the whole ceiling is uh, popped off. Yeah, everybody just goes reverts back to like, oh, let's try shit at this startup. Blah blah blah. Do, do do you think it's like the the insurmountable pressure that they're going through as their company just skyrockets or earns more and they close more rounds that that, they that can be it psychologically couldn't mm -hmm. take it or do you do you think that uh, it could be like other people bringing them back down like you no know, um, their friends the other startups maybe. it's not a dichotomy I think it's a mixture of both mm -hmm. right it's never a dichotomy it's never a uh, you know, um, it's not polarized, but again, we just go back to that. Right? Yeah, no, I, I, I can give you like an example of that is like, uh, like, like Grossari, mm -hmm. right? I, I think you had him on the show yep. before, but you know, from from my end, I'm hearing a lot of things like, oh, that they can easily be done. Like, it's, it's all you have to do. It's a simple ABC formula. When I'm like, bro, it's, it's really not. <laughs> Like, if you think you can do it, then go do it. Like, don't. Exactly. You know, like, there's, it's like, I, I don't know. I, I, it, could, it could be what, once once you reach up to a certain plateau, then no one's willing to help you okay. further along the goal. Because when you're a startup, right? And like, oh, you're a startup. I feel bad. Let me help you out. <laughs> right? And then you're, if you're, like, getting to Series B or C or even Series A, right? I think that's when, when the handouts, when the support. Uh, becomes more scarce. Yeah, exactly. And again, I just hope that it's the opposite. And I'm I'm seeing it now. Mm. In in our era, it's more rampant. Mm. Like, oh, that guy. Blah, blah. There's so much murmurings in the back. Even in our admin page, mm. it's pathetic sometimes. The 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 chismis happens there. Yeah. And I was like, what the hell is going on here? Right? Why why are we trying to bring people down? When in reality. We're all in this boat. We're not in the same boat. We're in the same storm. Yeah, yeah. And that storm, I don't think it's going to end anytime soon. Mm. And if we don't give each other rafts and lifeboats or buoys, whatever the hell you you can find, we're all just going to sink That's and everybody right. loses. That's right. Right? Because to say a unicorn that we're trying to target to bring down and all of a sudden we unearth all of these things that shouldn't be unearthed even. If they fall down and at the general public view of regional funds, they say, ah, why are Filipino founders like this? Mm. That in their best version of their best founders and their best startups, it's us ourselves that are sabotaging them. Yep. Trying to pull them back down to earth. Yep. When you do that, what's the picture we're showing as an ecosystem? Yeah. Yeah. Right? It's just sad. I mean, uh, it, it, it can also be because remember we, we, we mentioned before that uh, but before like startups, like back in the 2011, 2012s, right? Th there wasn't any support for us, mm. you know, in what we're doing at this stage of our venture. Yeah. Probably, I, I think it also could be probable that uh, when you get up to a certain level, then you feel exactly the same way where there's not people who can really help you because nobody's ever it's like getting, because the, the first thing when yeah. you see when you, you say someone who has raised like 77 million dollars is how can i get some of that right right that's what everybody thinks right. like is it too late to talk to him this yeah i think if i can get some of that right right but no one's thinking about how can i push him across the threshold right to you know a billion dollars like exactly. what kind of what kind of value could i offer to get that exactly back yes yeah, so. it's just sad mm -hmm. Right, we should, we should stop that. We should yeah. try to really do it. And I, I see it. I, I've seen a lot of our unicorns 
yeah, most of them are are being butchered right now. Yeah, they're yeah, going yeah. through rough shit. Yeah, but they're it's it's just beautiful to see when they are the most generous when sometimes they're the ones struggling the most, right? And who are we smaller startups to like? Well, I, I've uh, you know I, I'm. I've I've actually been battling something like that personally about like especially like in my position in sort of PH like where I actually could defend like another startup but I don't know if I should or if it's my yeah. business to do so or should I just stay on the unbiased Again, just like us we don't we don't have yeah. a playbook for this right yeah like I, I don't I I don't know what the what the proper I wish someone would just tell me like yeah go go defend them yeah I'll, you know then I would organize all the media to just to correct the situation but I don't know yeah I don't, me I, I try to the, when I feel like it's becoming more than what the issue is when it's becoming personal like guys if you tr- really try to show shade at people um then we're all just gonna go to shit yeah. we'll never have a unicorn yeah because again we self-sabotage and in the end who who, who takes the L's Everyone has a big L on their fe- in, the, in the forehead. Everyone. But what are the good lessons also? Okay, so just a bit, just bad lessons. What are the good lessons that you see, Chris? That we should probably keep doing. I mean, it's it's the really the op- the entire opposite of everything you, you mentioned, mm. right? Uh, which I, I do see. Uh, there's these there's these new clicks now. Um, I know we, we we were raised that clicks are a bad thing, but you know there's oh. clicks that keep each other. As long as you're not in a whole. gang. No, 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 yeah. <laughs> well, you're actively trying to be bloods and crips and but all they're, that. They're, they're developing their own, like, you know, bottom, like support system yeah. for themselves, right? Um, but the, the, these also need a lot of guidance. Um, the whole edu- uh, entrepreneur education thing should definitely change. We are still using a playbook from a decade ago, right? And to say that this is, I mean, like I, I like the the lean startup book, but you know, like nah, there's some things that you know have changed from <laughs> from you know from before when it was written till till now yeah. that you know may not be applicable you know in in today's situation. Absolutely right. Um, and so we have to stop using you know these these same playbooks, the same education from last year. Like imagine if computer science program was still teaching Cobalt, oh my right? god, like an old language because you know. It, it, the, the curriculum changes, right? It's dynamically right. changing now. Right. And that's fantastic. But we need to do the exact same thing for mm-hmm. startups. So, uh, I mean, really, uh, there's only a few accelerators, incubators, you know, venture builders that I can really say that are dynamically changing their their program. But it's not enough. Apparently, there's over 100 incubators, accelerators here in this country. There are? Yeah, I didn't even know that. Yes, holy shit, where are they? I got, come, I don't up and know. down the Philippines now. Oh wow! All right, okay. Last uh, question before we start: the founders only top five presented by Shoppable uh, with Christian Blanquera. But I want to understand. Just quick tip: you being the historian of startup VH yes, and the creator like, of the like startup VH yeah. uh, community, if you are gonna advise uh, a, a startup founder, new or old. Mm. On how to utilize that group properly, what would be those? Deal flow. When you say deal flow, what does that mean? Because number one is you need revenues, right? And uh, a lot of the things we do, even if we're you know consumer focused, you still need deal flow on the back end. So that's still a level of B two B. We need to start offering our services, yeah. like if you're a startup and you have like a service to other startups so they can grow and vice versa, right? Uh, I'm not saying, you know, give discount, but I think... You should Put pr- yourself out there. Yeah, promote more about what you're doing and how you're benefiting, right? Um, but it has to be, again, it has to be done in a way where... It, Pia doesn't piss, get pissed off. <laughs> yeah, Pia's like... No, no, no. <laughs> Where, where it doesn't sound cheesy or like, yeah. like, like an actual Make ad. it genuine. Yeah, like genuine kind of thing. So... Uh, I, th- I think that's, but you know, there's there's no harm in trying. Yes, right? like I, we would never kick out a startup. Like for me, I do it every time. Yeah, or hustle yeah. show when I feel like holy shit, I have a great episode. Mm-hmm. I'll post it out there. Yeah, you should post all of your uh, all of your no, stuff. No, but uh, uh, PA will kick me out. Wait, uh, <laughs> once or twice and whatnot, whatever. We'll see whatever that 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 adds value. But I but I also think it's like it's like 
people are still too conservative on Startup PH when we're so close to Unicorn. I think it's time is now yeah. to start pushing out your stuff so that way we can all grow together, right? So if I'm right. using like like like, like like uh, what's his name from Sprout? I'm. I, we're actually using Sprout. Patrick. Yeah, Patrick. We're also using Sprout, right? You know, like we're supporting mm-hmm. that thing. We had we had the other options. We're like, no, Sprout, bro. All yeah. day long. Right? Let's root for <laughs> our peers, guys. <laughs> when we say root, support, like use their product. Yeah. Give recommendations. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right, because exactly. somehow, some way, when you that that uh, that that spirit of paying it forward. Yeah. That's just gonna you know eventually get so much momentum yeah. that it's gonna push someone over the top. And I, I, I think that uh, overall, uh, as a community, we need to be more biased, biased in favor of our Peace. startups, right? <laughs> like other startups, our startups. Our startup, PH right? Filipino. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So there, uh, that's that. That would be the best utilization of, of startup PH is to create so much deal flow that's happening there. Because people already use it for for yeah. content and the latest news and yeah. to fish for questions. Well, Excuse me, it's the bad stuff that I'm just like. Yeah, but there's 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 a whole other thing that it can be used for. Right, absolutely. And again, you should maximize that. Not just ask for value, but yeah. give value. I, I could tell you a secret mm. that uh, about Caliber. Okay. That, that's not actually a bad secret, but it's like okay. an interesting secret. All right, what is it? Okay, so when Caliber started, okay. They post all of their jobs on startup PH jobs. Oh my god! And the conversion rate for startup PH jobs was really good. Yeah, because so it's hyper targeted. They maximized startup yeah. PH jobs, right? And we never kicked them out. Yeah. Right? So it's, again, he's a good historian. Yeah, yeah. There you go. <laughs> I, I was like, holy crap! Like eighty percent of our jobs is actually from Caliber. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. And again, this is it. I built my teams using Caliber. Yeah. I, and I, I, I forgot who I was talking to there, but they said. It really, the startup PH shop is that's the best way to find tech yeah, talent. Absolutely, right? at not, first, yeah, right, not even close. Yeah, but if you again want to make it uh, structured, I mean, speaking from experience, mm-hmm. caliber, not even close as well. All right, before we let you go, we need to go to the founders only top five presented by Shoppable. Whoop, 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 whoop. All right, now Chris, you're the OG, you're the historian, <laughs> you created startup PH. Typically, we only do top five, but you told me during the break that you got more. So, okay. Yeah. How, when I say top five, who do you think are your top five founders? But I think you want to do it a little bit different. How, how do you want to do this? Uh, well, you know, like I, 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 I like, I like historian because I, you know, I, I look at even before started PH, like, you, you know, you know, like the people I, I do admire mm. are the World War II startups, post World yes. War II startups. Yes. Right. Like, and um, not a lot of, I don't know a lot of, if a lot That's of people. the golden generation. I mean, do they teach us in school? Like, you know, like, do they look at like, how did like Rabina start? <laughs> like, yes. like for me, I, I was interested. Right. Right. And right. They, uh, they started post World War I've been trying to get II. them here, by the way. Oh yeah. I <laughs> am trying. Been years, bro. But whew, I'm trying. I swear one day we'll get them here. Oh. Yeah, so so it depends on what era, but I I also am exposed to a lot of startups as well, and okay. uh, but there, at the same time, there's also ones that I glorify that I've never met in my life. Okay, so, all right, let's start. So you're gonna do is in eras, in all eras. Right. Okay. Okay. So, what is the first era, and who are your top five founders there? First pick. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I, I, she, I, the guy came prepared. He made a list. I'm, I, I'm an older fellow. Okay. So. <laughs> I know I look young, but Sir Tito Chris, or I'm Tito an older Sir fellow. So. Okay. This era, first era, is this the post World War II era? What is this? What, yeah, how would I'm gonna you call this the uh, the post World War II era. Why is that? All why? the way to before startup PH. Okay. Right? Why? Why? Why did you j- bunch them all here? Just just so uh, that there's context. So the one one of the biggest reasons is. Uh, when you, in the, you have to imagine, like you know, post World War, everyone you know in the Philippines is trying to leave yep. as like refugees to rebuild, right? And there was a lot of problems here in the Philippines post World War. Right? Yep. But it's the people that stayed and saw opportunity through those problems are the ones that actually yeah. thrive through adversity, mm-hmm. right? So it's 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 quite obvious, right? And when I think about pandemic. Mm. Right. It seems like a very similar scenario, right? Where people are, you know, either either running running away or, you know, going mm. somewhere else. And, you know, there's the people who are left and thinking about 
you know, oppor- seeing opportunity in the pandemic, mm-hmm. right? And things that, that those are other people who will also thrive. So I, I, I think there's a, because because you have to know your history, right? In order, you know, to not repeat it, but also learn yeah. from it, right? So, so these are, let's just start the OGs, <laughs> just like Chris, Pre, pre-tech. Okay, so who oh are your God. OGs? You, First you, pick. UP is going to love me. Okay. Okay. This is like uh, entrepreneur education here. Okay. Okay. Uh, Domingo Rojas. Who's Domingo Rojas? Uh, the 1876 version. Year okay. 1876. All right. Who's this guy? Uh, he was a co-founder with Antonio Ayala and they made Ayala. Oh, right. I did not even know this. So why did you pick him? Um, they modernized all of Makati. Right. right? Basically, Makati was, was nothing. There was like... It was an airstrip. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Makata was, Avenue was the airstrip and yeah. the Blackbird restaurant was that was the airport. Yeah. Back yeah. then. And then so they, they saw they saw this thing and they're like, oh wow, there's a lot of things we could do with this. <laughs> right. And they, you know, that they they took a huge risk. Like imagine like yeah. property, right? You know, like yeah. I, I mean I know it was relatively cheap, but you know, it's still uh mm-hmm. relative to, you know, the the earnings there. So everything's really relative. But they took a huge risk. Mm-hmm. Uh they invested in the Philippines. Mm-hmm. Right versus you know, I'm I'm pretty sure they had money before. Yeah. You know, versus like you know, running and you know, keeping it, you know, yeah. holding it tight. Mm-hmm. But uh, they really invested in the growth of the Philippines. Oh, All right, sounds right? good. And then that's where everybody is. You know, going to Makati. You know, like <laughs> yeah, the with stuff. the traffic, they're the originators yeah, they're, of yeah, the traffic. They're, they're the ones who saw vision. They had okay. a great vision. All right, second pick. Uh, now to say, John Gakong Wei. Yep. Yep. Yeah. The 1954 version. Okay. Yeah. So, Big John. <laughs> Big John. Uh, yeah. yeah. So um they uh were the ones who started uh Rabina Corporation, Universal Rabina yep. Corporation. URC. Um and it I mean the only the only context I I could have gotten was actually from Wiki and a few older articles that I had I had to use the the time machine for. Mm. Uh, but apparently after World War II, uh they want, they were thinking about restarting all of the basic industries right right so one of the things that they started was like the basic corn chip right right and uh, snacks <laughs> right I'm like so how how would you I, I, imagine, I, I can only imagine and this is the reason why I I I, I love history is yeah being in that era right and seeing all the aftermath Ooh. and saying we have to have potato chips <laughs> What is our merienda? <laughs> we, we don't have potato chips. <laughs> uh, yeah, but that's that, pandekoko today. Okay. No, no, but, but like, okay, like, uh, with that said, is there was issues with import export because they had to import right. the corn, right, 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 and they were also trying to build their own, you know, uh, corn fields and things yep, like that, yep. right? But post. World War II, you have to imagine the hustle of like we, we we have a problem. How do we get our our Filipino products into Indonesia? I'm like, what that's export? not even a problem. This is a problem. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I don't yeah, even know. Yeah. I wasn't even sure if they had planes back then. Right. You know, like no, they did. It's just just <laughs> foundational. Like, yeah, yeah. Uh, amazing. You can just see Summit Group, right? How many? I mean, how many Robinsons properties are out there? Oh yeah, that's that's him. Yeah, okay, that's third pick. Like, uh, I mean, everyone knows, like JCI knows Henry C. There you go, Tatang. The the 1958 version. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> what? Wait. What is a 1958 version? Is it Henry? because people have versions of themselves depending ah. on the decade? So I'm I'm choosing the ones where they actually did top dog. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. Tatang technically again. SM yeah. So, group? so yeah. So the interesting part of this one was you know we we all know the story about SM. They started with shoes, but like around this year was the one where. Uh, they decided to go in, you know, invest in the mall, like just to get in the capital, whole property. Right. Like it was a huge risk. Obviously, he had investors, but you know, it takes vision to think about yeah. a mall, right? Even yeah. when there was already, yeah. like you know, shoe mart, literally. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, All right, fourth pick. Okay, so this is not in the in in like the old days. Okay, like, but. I think for the Gen Zs, it'll be the old days. Okay. But for us, it's like yesterday. <laughs> okay, who's this? Uh, Dado. Dado Bonato. Yeah, Again, yeah, yeah. If you want to listen to him, I've had him on the show my 100th episode. Yeah. Um, On, on Hustle Share. Uh, I mean, and the last two I like, especially Dado, is like they're, they're, they're tech guys. Yep. Right. Um, and 
They play with the big boys in the U.S., right? They got companies sold. Yep. Uh, just amazing, amazing, amazing. And again, son of a farmer. Yeah. Yeah, Here. imagine that. Oh, my yeah. God. He's just hustled his way, studied hard, got to the U.S. I, 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 it's, it's been a while since uh, I did the research, but it was one of these guys. But I'll tell you I'll tell you my fifth one for this era. Okay. Uh, Winston Damarillo. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and again, multiple exits. Now, now, I, I, now, I forgot which story I was reading, but it's either Dotto or Winston. Uh, apparently, they developed something that was the basics of what we know as cloud technology. Wow, yep. I like think AWS that, yeah. cloud technology. Mm -hmm. If you want to check it out, maybe both of them said it. I had both. Winston and he had this whole Nussle Share episode. It's going to be in the description box. And also, Tado, I couldn't get Henry C. I'm sorry. I wasn't doing Hustle yeah, Share yet. Yeah. I couldn't do John Gokongwe. And I can't do Domingo Rojas. I was not alive yet. But I had the last two yeah. right there in that era. So these are the OG era. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, what's the next era? Okay, now, now we can go on this era now. Okay. <laughs> Modern era. Oh, I, I guess I guess it's our era, like an our generation Tito, okay. era. So 2012, early startup era. Yeah. Okay. Oh, it's, it's, it's still they're still relevant now. Yeah, absolutely. And the, these are the forefathers, like you, or the the, okay. the the pillars of the startup ecosystem. Or let's see. All right, who are your th uh, five picks for this Tito era? The okay. Yeah, the, the Tito era. I like mm. that. I like that. Okay. Uh, Ray Rufundo. Oh my God, Ray! You just turned into a Tito. Why, Ray? Uh, cause this this guy, the, number one, personally, like he's such the nicest guy. Like, yep. he, it's impossible to hate him. Yep. Right? I mean, I, I, unless yeah, you're no, unless, unless, unless you're working for him, but uh, <laughs> you know, personally, you know, it's really hard to hate this guy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's a lovable Overall, guy. Okay. Um, number right. two is uh, he's in stealth okay. all the time, and he's making a lot of money. Who is this? It's Ray. Ah, oh, right. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah you so, just know it. You just know where he spent. He, 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 yeah, he, yeah. Makes, he, he <laughs> spends it with the boys, but yeah, he's, yeah, he's yeah. always great. All right, who's your second pick? Uh, you know him. Uh, you had him on the show. ER? ER role. Yeah. Tito ER. Last episode, actually. Why? Uh, it's re really, it's coming from nothing and just uh, getting up to such a high series. Uh, just amazing, amazing story. So this is like me. I've I've never met him personally, Dude, but, but his story. But but again, I I love I love reading the the growth and this you know, like the whole startup stuff. Um, you know, like and just seeing how everything's progressing. You know, in terms yeah. of founders, right? And just just trying to imagine, like putting putting myself in their shoes, and seeing you know there there's like this level of greatness. Right? And I think I think that's what with our generation is like. Yeah. Greatness is what we want to yeah. achieve. And then, right? dude. You're a dad. He almost, yeah, so he almost lost his family. He yeah. had have almost fallen out with his wife. Yeah. And their firstborn child mm. had uh, a disability. Mm. And when we get, and the child passed away mm. somewhere. Again, just imagine going through that. And he went bankrupt too. Mm. <laughs> just amazing. Again, it's going to be in the description box. Check out that amazing. If you're not inspired, I've had him three times on the show now already. You should. This yeah. is e easily one of the most inspiring people. And uh, he's just like Ray. Super nice guy and super faithful. Yeah. Also. You know, I, I swear everyone I'm going to mention is going to have their own wiki, just like the ones I mentioned before. Absolutely. There you <laughs> go. All right. Who's next? Third pick. Okay. Uh, this one, maybe not a lot of people know. Mm. Um, but I, I just happen to know personally. But also, I'm not actively talking to this person. Okay. I, I, have, I have met him. I have talked to him. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, but he's he's doing stuff very stealthy in a stealthy like way and okay. is doing very well. Uh, James Florentino, formerly James from Florentino, right? Formerly from Satoshi, another dev, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. So he's working on this uh, this new venture called Chain Crisis, okay, which is a triple A content metaverse. So it's what? A, basically it's like uh, like 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 a shoot 'em up first person shooter, but as a metaverse, uh, the theme is um, wow. Uh, what do you call it? Cyberpunks. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you if you look at what he's developing, and you know, it's just really amazing. Uh, he had, I think, I think it closed like on about two point two million dollars, uh, and is barely spending it. 
What? So a lot of a lot of financial Another discipline there. Another dub too. It's amazing. Uh, AAA content. Not even targeting the Philippines. He's going to target the U.S. Wow. Yeah, so um, I'm definitely, definitely, definitely going to buy in. On I think he was he a said. dev in caliber at one point. I'm not sure, but he was a dev somewhere. The early starts, er, early days. I think he was in caliber because I see him in Kickstart before. Yeah, that's where yeah. I first met him. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, good, good luck bringing him on the show because he's he's very stealthy. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Sometimes I get lucky. So we'll see. All right, next. Okay. Fourth I, pick. I don't even know why I didn't put this guy on, on the top of my list. I, don't, I guess this is uh, random order. Mm-hmm. You you know him, man. Yep. Jay Fajardo. Yep. The real OG. Jay, like, like yeah, Jay, Jay is definitely an, an idol of mine, though. I, I know that we're also friends as well, but mm-hmm. uh, this just his accomplishments. Uh, he's Again, like lovable guy. It's really hard mm-hmm. to not like Jay, mm-hmm. uh, and he's still doing his thing, right? He's still uh, throwing events. Uh, I, I'm trying to convince him to reopen the n- roof camp again, <laughs> right? But uh, we're all old farts now. There's yeah, gonna be there. I, I think right now he's running a uh, founders drinks. Mm, yeah, so it. that's interesting. All right, last for this Tito era. Okay. Oh, I, I, oh. Okay. Well, can I be biased? Okay. My Ooh. wife, Sam. Absolutely. Yeah, the yeah. boss. <laughs> the real boss. Okay, why Sam? Okay, let, let's give Sam some flowers so you can go home tonight. <laughs> Just kidding. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. No, number one, I did get in trouble last night, so it's nice that I'm doing this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This will give me pokey points. Okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> There you go. Let's just get home. Get enter the home points. Okay, but why Sam? It's just again, because Sam you know is okay. Go. You know what? Like uh, people talk about uh, like like women empowerment and things like that. Yeah, that's that's not what I'm trying to do. Mm. Uh, like she she puts me on a pedestal. Like you know, like like a you know, like like a founder. Like you know. But uh, honestly, I want to. I'm putting her on a pedestal this time, mm. right? And. You get, you have to see her work. She's just knows everything, right? Like if you basically if you have a problem like HR accounting wise with your startup, she could fix it like that. Yeah, she just knows everything, and she, and she doesn't want the limelight. Yeah, that's 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 a thing. Is uh, I, I I think she's building up towards it. So maybe you'll see more of her. But, okay, Sam, I'll have your showbiz entry. There you go. Yeah, but oh my god, yeah, she is amazing at what she does. Like. Okay, so perfect, basically, yeah. uh, Choppable, it feels like we have three CEOs. Correct. Right. And yeah, she holds down the fort. Like everything. She can be Batman. She can be Robin. Yeah, she yeah, can yeah, be yeah, Alfred yeah, in yeah, the yeah. same day. She's even doing sales really well. She has her own sales volume Ooh, by herself. That's amazing. She's like HR, accounting, operations, sales, support, everything. I still remember the one thing that Sam, and this you, you and Sam did. We were about to sell Chatbot 2017. Mm. I was super low on cash. I was not gonna be. I wasn't gonna make payroll. Okay. We we're just in the process of you know wrapping it up with Sterling. Like guys, sorry, I did. Everything's in AR. It's not like we don't have money. Everything's stuck in AR. That's mm. how dev shops are. That's how B two B is. Mm. I went to your office in St. Francis. And I remember you guys lent me a check to make payroll. I will never forget that. You know, I mean, what? Yeah. you know what's funny? Mm. I didn't even know about that. <laughs> wow, I didn't know. So maybe yeah. Sam, right? Yeah, it was a Sam move. And again, nicest person, humblest, and super yeah. just amazing. Amazing what they do. Uh, and what she does. Again, she doesn't mind being Robin. To, again, she doesn't want the limelight. But if needed be, she can be Batman. And she yeah. can be Alfred. Oh, or absolutely. three at the same time. Absolutely. Right, and I, you know, like and this this time around, um, you know, like uh, it's I, I really want to push her, uh, you know, to get a lot of the the spotlight because she's well deserving. I mean, like yeah. if you ever met her, she, like people just gravitate around her, mm-hmm. like in the office, outside the office. Yeah, and it's super yeah. approachable. That's her superpower. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. So Samilin, Samilin, Samilin Blanguera. Oh, there I I, have her. <laughs> I remember her full name. 
Okay. There yeah. you go. She's a she's a very strong leader. I yep. Okay. This is a very. I mean, I mean, I love that you did your your era based top five. Who are your? I last? have the younger ones. Here. This okay. Yeah. The youngins. <laughs> the youngins. Top five. I got the young. All right. So the, the, these guys are gonna be so surprised if they ever hear yep. I mentioned them. All right. Who are your top five for the young generation? This is top five Web three. Okay. Let's go. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm calling them the the Web Three Mafia. Okay, Web Three Mafia. So these these guys are all under thirty. Okay, that's good. <laughs> Not Tito material. But, but I'm I'm just noticing as I'm going to all the Web Three events, I'm like, hmm, these a little pattern so, going yeah. on here. <laughs> It's a little pattern. It right. feels like it feels like us, like you know, when we were mm-hmm. like all. I, I know these pictures. Like this is like a new, yep. Yep. brand new generation. Yep. But who are these uh, Web Three Mafia that you see? Okay. Uh, first one is uh, Jello Wong from wow. Lika. Lika, I've had him on right, the show. Right. Mm-hmm. So NFT guy, marketplace. Mm-hmm. Uh, Still in college, bro. Then when I had him on the show, yeah, yeah, I was like, what? <laughs> All right, that's that's crazy. Why is he special? Uh, they're really going for the raise, so uh, they already launched their platform. There's a lot of people who say they're they're going to launch an NFT platform. Mm-hmm. Uh, these guys already did it. Uh, I'm not saying they're they're perfect. But they're 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 literally on their way. They're thinking about this in a in in a more business sense, uh, more entrepreneurial yep. sense. Um, yes, and, business pedigree too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, 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 have, they have some yeah. pedigree. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. All right, second. Well, I can't I can't predict what's going to happen in the future, but right now, it looks good. I mean, I, I've been observing for the last like okay. two years, right? So it seems like Tito Chris, the uh, ever, the forever lurker. There you go, <laughs> historian. Second. Pick. Okay, uh, Jiro Reyes from Bitsquela. Mm. Yeah. Okay, why? Uh, education, Bitcoin, um, in Tagalog and Sabano, right? Uh, I think that's going to be important. Uh, I I don't think they actually found their uh their earning model yet, but it's it's definitely going to be there. So maybe a little too early, but definitely I would call them like you know like if if you if you look at it like ten years down the line. These guys would be the OGs. Got it. Right. Yep. The They'll be the one has to share. The future OGs. And right? we are, you know, <laughs> sipping, sipping our, our drinks wherever. Yeah, All right. Yeah. Last uh, three picks. Third pick. Okay. Third one is, um, oh, I like this one. Jeffrey Reyes. Of? Twala. Twala. Dude, he's our age. He's our age? Yeah. Oh, crap. <laughs> Oh, that is that is a compliment to you, Jeffrey. He's no, not here. Right? I'm, I'm I'm just studying. I'm I'm like I'm like watching this, but yeah, um, right. awesome technology. Yep. Um, and e signatures, but he also has a he also has a bigger plan. Mm. Uh, just needs to pair up with the right set of investors, and he's on his way. Yeah, he'll be definitely on his way. Yep. Had him on the show, so again, listen, listen up. It's gonna be in the description box next. Okay. Uh, how many? That's four. Iman Navala. M. Eman. Eman, sorry. Yeah, Eman Navalan. Oh, you know. I, I've had him on the show on Hustle Share oh, okay. a few weeks ago. Okay. Of Tetrix. Tetrix, yep. 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 Why, why, why Eman? Uh, I see them all. I always see them. They have their, their booths, uh, but their technology is also solid. I've, I validated it already. Can I just say he's also a Tito? He has a kid now. Several kids. Okay. All right. <laughs> But again, Web3, okay? I'll, I'll give you... I, I said Web3 Mafia, eh? You said third under 30? <laughs> oh, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Hey, man, you look under 30 now. Okay, very nice. <laughs> All right. Okay. This, what, what's exciting about the Tetrix ecosystem that you see? Honestly, Pitaka is just as good as any of those other wallets. Mm. The only difference is that it's here. Got it. Right. But in terms of tech-wise, it can really compare... You know, wallet to wallet, feature by feature. And you, you, you're asking a, a dev of dev god right here. So, man, that speaks a lot. Last and final pick. Okay, uh, this one's a tie between uh, Warren Gonzaga and Christian Kiarpos. Who are these guys? I've never heard of them. Uh, these guys are the founders of Web Three Philippines. Mm. Right. What is Web Three Philippines? Uh, so Web3 Philippines is almost like um, a, a dev con, oh. but for specifically Web3. Got right. it. Um, now they have their ups and downs, but they're, they're really bold. Actually, the, I like this entire group because they're, they're really bold in terms of like uh, they, they've gone through a lot of issues like uh, with other 
startups, right? That are older people that don't understand what they're doing. <laughs> but I'm like, oh, bro, like, don't you remember when you were their age, they were, you know, we yeah. were doing the exact same yeah. things. Like, yeah. you know, just because you say it's, it's not mannerism, it's not proper. Yeah. You know, but yeah, they're, 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 they're all really bold. Correct. Um, And, you know, they're, They'll they'll just do stuff and then say sorry later, but you know, it's, it's, <laughs> I love it. But it's I, a quality of the founder. You have to be brazen about those things. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I I don't think a lot of people understand that that's that's actually a good trait for an entrepreneur. Yeah. Is fuck rules, man. Yeah, just 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 see how far you can go, right? And especially right. in a new space like Web three, like you know, right? Absolutely, go all the way. Well, what are the rules? You make the rules. Yeah, exactly. Right. All right. Again, thank you very much, Chris, for such an amazing, amazing episode. Um, but again, before I let you go, what should, if they they if they want to reach out? I know you're deep in the metaverse and cyber, whatever <laughs> the thing that you're in now. But I just know that where to, I'll find you and start a PH every time. What are you up to now? What are you looking for? And what's next for you? Yeah. So uh, I, I think definitely uh, I'm, I'm committed to Shoppable as a CTO. Uh, but I'm more playing like a supporting role for mm -hmm. uh, Sam and Carlo. Mm -hmm. So they're definitely more of the, should be the stage people. Uh, and I'm just like the supporting husband. There you go. <laughs> Rent Exacom and Upscom. There you go. Yeah, because um, I think after Shoppable, I definitely want to do my last startup. The last the last ride. Yeah. Always, I, I have, always I have, exciting. I have, I have one or two more. <laughs> oh, it is, it is. I, yeah, I, but... Um, but I, again, that's my thing is I don't I don't want to do these things at the same time. I'm just yeah. focus. Really, a one person guy. Yeah. You know, and enjoy, uh, and enjoy your stallions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's it. Yeah. Man. So uh, thank you I'm, so I'm much again, yeah. the historian of startup ph and always uh, always beautiful to catch up, man. You're my you're my bro. You know how I love how much I love you, and and again and Sam and Carlo and everyone. But you know, our brotherhood. It's going to be etched forever. But again, before I let you go, follow us in whatever podcast app you're listening to. And like, comment, and subscribe on YouTube. This is a YouTube app. And if you like what we're talking about, you have any comments, if you want to suggest any type of questions or guests, comment in the description box on YouTube. And again, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We A lot of you guys are watching this episode. We don't subscribe. What the hell? Subscribe. It helps us out in Hustle Share. Oh, you know what? I and forgot patterns. to subscribe. Oh, okay. The perfect example. <laughs> I'm subscribing. Right? Again. And again, if you want to be part of our community... Join our community in, on Hustle Share and Facebook and, and uh, the premium.hustleshare.com. And lastly, before anything else, it's gonna, if he did say some jargon, he did say a lot of jargon. It's going to be show notes on hustleshare.com. Again, Chris, thank you very much. Peace, guys. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. Peace. Thank you so much for watching Hustle Share on YouTube. If you like this video, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to this channel to get more content like this. And to get the full audio episodes of Hustle Share and Founders Only, subscribe to our podcasts at Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.